like when I watched your show with Big Hurt, I was laughing my ass off because I'm like, dude, this guy's nailing it. And like, you could have really, I mean, you could have busted him out. I was concerned. You don't realize it when you see the video, but that could have gone bad for me. The Wes Watsons and all these guys, they did all this shit, right? But they kept them in these mediums and stuff like that. Let me explain something to you. They all did it. They all told on their friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all facts, you know? There's no honor amongst them. Yeah, I was, uh, I was born in Baltimore City, and I was raised in Baltimore City. Um, my father was in prison, so I didn't, uh, my mother, you know, she was there, but really my grandparents raised me, because my grandparents, they were good people, but they didn't have a lot of money or anything like that, because, you know, basically my family was just like, there's a lot of drug addicts, criminals, prostitutes, things like that. So I was growing up in that type of environment. And the first time, like, I met my father, I was nine years old, and he escaped from prison. So when he escaped from prison, my mother took me to meet him or whatever. And he was like, from that point right there, he started grooming me. You know, like, he would tell me, like, first off, he was smoking weed with me. You know what I mean? He's the first person to smoke weed with me when I'm nine years old. So he's sitting here. He basically groomed me, like, how... He was like, yeah, I don't want no soft son, all that kind of stuff. Now, any, any kid, nowadays I look at him as a scumbag, but any kid always looks at their father as like, you know, a superhero right. or whatever. You know, so I thought the guy was cool. So he's basically, he would groom me like and tell me like certain shit, you know, like, yeah, you got to, you know, basically how to commit crimes. You know, he taught me how to do hot shots and I'm not talking about a car. Right. You know, uh, what a hot shot is when people put stuffing people's drugs to get rid of them and stuff like that. Now I've never done that, but like that's the type of um person he was. So I would I did good in school and everything like that. Like I was like the I was like the bad kid in the nerd class. So I always hung with the, you know, with the kids who got in trouble, things like that. So eventually I started out really committing the crimes with I would like rob baseball card shows and stuff like that. Go to a baseball card show, take your cards in and swipe the people's cards at the table, you know, at the table and all. But I, I had to do stuff like that because I didn't have no, my family didn't have money. I didn't have Jordans and stuff like that. So I had to get my own stuff, right. you know, because nobody wants to go to school. When you're going to a, a city school, especially back in them days, like they have this bullying stuff now and all, but like you can't go in there dressed all, you know what I mean? Right. Like you're not going to make it. So I started doing stuff like that. And then, um, you know, just getting in with, you know, just, I liked it. You know, wh wh where I'm from, it wasn't cool to like get good grades. It wasn't none of that. You know, it was cool to get locked up. It was cool to have the police after you, you know, um, sell drugs. So when I got into selling drugs, honestly, the first time um, we were in the woods and we were kids, like we're teenagers and we're looking for like snakes and shit like that. Dude. Rolled over and found a stash. It was probably like, to my knowledge today, it's probably like a half key of cocaine. You know, it was a bunch of valves and stuff that's already bagged up and everything. So I'm like, shit, I know drug addicts from my family. You know what I mean? All through the neighborhood. So I start going to the bars and I start selling coke. By the time I realized how to sell it, I mean, back then cocaine was so expensive. I'm probably selling eight balls for like 50 bucks. You know what I mean? So people... Finally, this lady told me, like, no, you got to get a scale and everything like that. And so I, I learned that. So eventually it starts getting bigger. You, you're getting to a, a higher level. And so, and we have a little crew, guys like me, you know, don't got everybody's raised by their grandparents. So we run the streets all night, do whatever. There's a place called uh, Baltimore Block. It's just full of strip clubs. Okay, now it's probably a quarter of the size that it used to be. Back then it was wide open. A lot of the girls that we knew, they were strippers. And honestly, they were underage. You know, they were our age, 15, 16. I was going to say, how old are you? Yeah, I was going to say, at this point, right. how old are you? Yeah, 15, 16, okay. Right. Yeah, so I, uh, yeah, I'm about 15 years old. So what I would do was we would make up these things. We call them G-Packs. And people call it crack or whatever, but we called it ready rock. You know, it's just cooked up coke. So, like, my whole, my grandmother's street, about, like, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, because all the strippers would go to work at, um, like, 4 o'clock. So, the whole street will be lined up with yellow cabs, because there wasn't Uber or nothing back then. Right. And it was strippers. 
So I'm coming out, I'll come out three o'clock and I'm giving them all their G packs so that they can go to work and they can sell it. And then, you know, so that's where we started getting a lot of money. Now, there was an indictment that came down. They indicted the whole Baltimore Street. It was a federal indictment. We were on the top of the federal indictment. So we run down to our lawyers when we hear about it. Well, the feds can't indict you if you're under 18 unless it's got like murders involved or something. Right. So they took us off of that. But then anyway, the whole indictment, you don't hear about it nowadays. They just put the whole thing under the, um, you know, hit it because there was actual cops that were actually having sex with the girls, smoking crack, a couple states attorneys, stuff like that. So, you know, they had to put that on a hush and it was easy to hush things back then. There was no social media. Right. So I wound up, there was some shit. I, I went to like jail or something like for stupid shit, you know, and I, I wound up beating the case and I get out and I'm setting up this uh, drug deal. This girl pages me. This is back in the day of pagers. And she's like, hey, you know, um, these guys, uh, somebody's trying to kill you. And I'm like, yeah, tell them to get in line. You know what I mean? But she's like, well, how will I know that you're doing this this week? So I'm like, shit, she knows what she's talking about. Well, whatever deal they were going to do, they were going to do the deal first time. And then the second time they were going to rob me and kill me. So I'm like, okay, I'll get these. So I turned around. I called up a couple of my homeboys. We wound up robbing them. But a whole bunch of shit just happened. And people, you know, a car crashed when they were, I'm sitting there in a the car. They're supposed to come rob me and shit. They crash into the car, all this shit. Anyway, I get away with the cash. So when I get away with the cash, the police obviously get involved because there's a guy handcuffed in the bushes and somebody's bushes. You know what I mean? So next thing you know, I had to run. I went on the run to Florida. I was 19 at the time. So I went on the run to Florida for a couple of years. So I was down in Boca Raton, Florida and everything like that. So when I come back, I come back to Maryland, I wind up turning myself in. I beat the case. And now after, after that situation, I go ahead and I, I grab some Coke or whatever. And I'm, and I start jamming. I put a little crew together. I got all the bars in my area. They're locked down. You know what I mean? I got them probably like $60,000 a weekend, you know, we're pulling in at these bars. Well, eventually a lot of shit starts happening because people come from different areas to try to rob us, stuff like that. You know, I get into a few things, you know, go to war with a couple people, whatever. So what happens is we're in front of this bar. It's called the Garden Inn. And it's like three o'clock in the morning. And I didn't even have no Coke or nothing at this, at, you know, this night. But it's me and my buddies, we're all hanging out. So all of a sudden, this white neon pulls up. Now, when the white neon pulls up, this guy gets out, big black guy, you know, he comes walking down. He's like, what's up, B? What's up? And he's, it's like a New York. He's trying to sound like he's from New York or he may have been from New York. But see, I've been to New York at this point. So I'm like, man, this guy is some strange dude. He's like, well, who's white boy E, white boy E? I'm like, why do you want to know that? He's like, no, nah, I'm just trying to get like a half or whatever. So I'm thinking, I'm like, so you're from New York where I get my coke from. So you're coming all the way down here to get it. Something's not right. <laughs> so as he comes walking up, I give a nod to my buddy, you know, to fucking knock the guy out, whatever. And we're just going to whip his ass. Well, my buddy misses. So the guy runs towards me. I hit him. So we all jump on this guy. We start this guy up. And I mean, I'm a big dude. I'm like 6'2", probably 250. Now, my friends, they were bigger than me. They were like the type that wore like Timberlands in the summertime, you right. know, the camouflage, you know, they were like real thugs. So we're kicking this, doing everything. Next thing you know, a bus, because we're right in the main street, a MTA bus comes around, has to swerve around. And I see the guy on the thing. So I'm like, all right, come on, let's get out of here. So now when we get out of there, we go to this place I used to call it the Bat Cave. It was this house that we, you know, where we run to if there's problems, figure out our plan. So we get to the Bat Cave. And I um, page my younger brother. He's passed away now. So I page my younger brother and I tell him to give me a call. So he calls me. I said, look, and now this is like four o'clock in the morning. I said, look, walk up to Crackhead Timmy's house because that's what the house that we we're all hanging at. I said, go up to Crackhead Timmy's house. Tell me what's going on. So about 20 minutes later, he pages me. He's like, man, Eric, some shit really happened up there. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, somebody killed a police officer. 
I'm like, whoa, what the right? So now I probably only got like a hundred grand liquid cash, and it's like four of us. So I'm like, shit. But I got to take my friends with me. So I'm like, are it, you sure he's a guac? Is it the black right? guy that you guys were beating his ass? Is that the cop? Yes. Well, yes. Yeah, so I'm about to get into that. It wasn't. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, I was gonna say, fuck. That went bad. Sure. All right. I'd still. I'd be under the jail. It's a little. The actual police could have gotten in trouble for this. And this, uh, I'll tell that part. Um, so I was like, do you know what's going on? He's like, well, I don't know totally. I said, tell Crackhead Timmy to page me. So about 10 minutes later, Crackhead Timmy paged me. I'm like, what's up, man? What are they talking about? A cop got killed or something like that. He's like, man, they just took all the girls and everything down to the police station. They're asking questions about you. And, um, you know, actually nobody told. But um, anyway, he wasn't a cop. He was not a cop and he didn't die. What it was, was he was, the cops dropped him off to get him to make a controlled buy from me because they wanted to, you know, set me up or whatever. And when the paramedics and all got there, he's laying in the middle of the street. The guy couldn't, you know, he couldn't talk. So the paramedic lady was like, well, that's the reason. His tongue was out of his mouth. I guess when we were kicking him or whatever, he bit his tongue off. So now. It's horrible, bro. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> We really ain't got going to run or nothing. So I go set up shop in a, in a hotel, the Ramada Inn, that's in the county. So we do that for a couple months, let things cool down. I get back around the neighborhood. Now, this is December. I get raided. Narcotic Squad raids my apartment. So when they raid my apartment. You're at the Ramada End or your apartment? No, no. This another... is when I came back. Okay. I came back. So um, they raid my apartment. They don't find nothing or whatever, but um, they lock me up handcuffed me and everything it was like ted i had like 20 some thousand in there they said i had six thousand figure go figure you know but anyway the the one cop main narcotics cop he walks me out into like the hallways of the apartment by myself and he's like if you ever seen new york undercover back in the day listen everything the, the you're guy, saying that the i the the um the neon like nobody knows what a neon is like i remember the neon you know yeah. you're talking about pager like you know I, every right, time I yeah, say, every time I say something to my wife, like I mentioned, yeah, yeah, no, I remember this guy paged me, and she, she, she giggles, you know, she like, <laughs> paged you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, they don't know the struggle. I know. <laughs> so, uh, so he he walks me out of the, uh, in, in the hallway now, like New York undercover. Remember the the black cop JC or whatever, yeah. the one the big dude. He looks just like him, right? So he gets me in the hallway, and he's like, he's like. He points outside and he, like you can see through the glass, you know how like apartment buildings are set up. There's a white neon out there. He's like, you see that white neon? And I looked and I'm like, he's like, that's mine. And he seemed to look on my face. And he said, don't worry about it. He's like, I can't do nothing about that because we'll get in trouble. Basically, because they, they left him on his own. So I'm like, so I'm like, OK, so what's the point of this? I'm just like standing there. And he's like, but let me tell you something. He's like, if I ever catch you alone, I'm going to blow your brains out. So I was like, and then look, I was cocky. I said, um, well, let me tell you something. I said, if I ever catch you alone, I'm going to blow your brains out. So that started the, uh, Jesus, it was like a war. So I get out. I get out at that point. I get out on bail for that. So everywhere I went, Matt, it was just terrible. Like I would get pulled over. I had like an acro legend back then. And they would cut my seats. They would do everything. But they never caught me with nothing. So now, I, me and my buddy, he's so stupid. I was down Ocean City. I shouldn't call him a buddy. But um, he, I was down Ocean City. And I came back. I just came back from Ocean City. Now, we had two apartments in this place called Lock Raven Village. That's in the county. Where all our drugs and stuff were supposed to be at. Now, this, see, he had them at his girlfriend's apartment or whatever. So they had seen me go there and they raided it. So me and him are driving. Next thing you know, we're surrounded. Now, this is a black dude, but he was like, he wasn't a street dude at all, man. So he's like this. The guy jumps out of the car. The cop jumps out of the car. He's got the gun. He's like, what's going on? What's going on? I said, that's the cops. What do you think's going on? So they yank us out of the car and stuff like that. So I, I got no drugs on me. Once again, so I'm laughing at him, you know, and he's like, yeah, you're laughing. He's like, what about? And he said the address, right, of the dude's girlfriend. So I'm just looking. And then I look at my buddy. He's like, it's true. And he's like halfway faints. So now we get to jail. 
All right, Central booking at that. It ain't even like Baltimore City Jail or nothing. So they give me no bail. They give him like a fifty thousand dollar bail, you know, something light. But anyway, we're sitting there in jail, and he's he's scared to death. He's like, look, they're looking at our tennis shoes. They're looking at the. I said, man, ain't nobody taking nothing from nobody, man. What was wrong with this guy, right? So he gets out on bail. I have no bail. Well, the girl I was with at the time, she was pregnant with my with my daughter. She was probably about um like six months pregnant, something like that. So I had my grandfather, I had my I had her, and I had like two lawyers, and I had a bail review in a few days. So first off, in a bail review, you're not they're not supposed to be there. The whole narcotic squad shows up. And they're sitting there, like, you know, telling the, the prosecutor, like, say this, say that, whatever. So the judge wound up giving me a quarter million dollar cash bail. So I was out that night. So when I get out that night, I'm catching a cab to um, the girl's house can, because can, they had confiscated. Can I ask you a question? Um, you said a quarter of a million dollar cash bail. What does that mean? Well, listen, that, that's just that's just fancy terms. Right. You know what I mean? It means I can't post property or anything like that. You can still go through a bondsman, oh, okay. you know what I mean, and put up cash. So I wound up putting up probably like 15000 or whatever just to get out. Yeah, see, it's a lot of times people say stuff like that. And people go, did he put them out? I didn't put up a quarter million. Right, okay. So I'm, I'm, I'm catching the cab, and I tell the cab to stop to get some cigarettes from 7-Eleven. When I do, I walk in there. This is the narcotic cut. He's in there. So I see this. I'm like, Jesus Christ, you know. So from that point, it turned into a tailspin of just like, it was hell. So I get a hold of my buddy and I told him, I said, dude, listen, I said, uh, you're not built for this. It's my fault because the heat was on me, but you shouldn't have the drugs there. But look, I said, what we'll do is we'll play this out as long as possible. And at the end of the day, I won't let you go to prison. I was like, they want me. So I'll cut a deal where I just go to prison. So instead of taking my word for that or whatever, it winds up, I found out later, he was telling me for some other shit. So everything, everything plays out. And I wound up, my lawyer called me an idiot because I could have beat the case. Um, but what happened was I go to court for just, you know, regular dis, you know, the district court or whatever for like um, one of my like, you know, the preliminary hearings or whatever. Right. So this is how they faked it out. And this is so dumb. I wind up, as I'm in court, the narcotics people are there, and the prosecutor was down with this. The prosecutor said, oh, also, we have an indictment for the girl who I had pregnant. You see what I'm saying? So I, she had nothing. So I freak out. Now, we're in the middle of the courtroom. I call the guy a bitch. He's, you know, he, he said something to me. So we almost fight in the middle of the courtroom. Judge is like hitting his gavel, like, stop, stop, all this type of shit, right? So anyway, I get out of there, but here's what's up. It was never an indictment. That was just bullshit to put pressure on me. She was cooperating with the guy, okay? She, well, she was sleeping with him and everything, eventually. So I didn't know this, right? So when I wind up, I wind up, we go to um, court, and I told my lawyer, I said, look, I said, I just want, I know they want me, I just want a deal where so uh, nobody else goes to prison, you know, just me. And he said, you're an idiot, you know, because I could beat it. But um, that's what I did. So I cut everybody loose, right? <laughs> so back then, this was in, um, that was around like 1999. Back then down, down here, there wasn't all this, you know, killing witnesses and all that kind of stuff. Well, there was, but then they finally passed the law that they, you know, now they can seal it. Well, it used to be a law that if they investigated you for something, and they closed the investigation. They had to send you, and you know, you can't came up, you know, clear. They would send you what they just did. Like they would be like, we were investigating you or whatever. So I'm in prison. I'm sitting on my bunk. I get this big pack of illegal mail. It's not from my lawyer. I'm like, what the fuck is this? I start reading it. This is scumbag, right? That I told him, look, I'm not gonna let you go to prison. And I did it, you know. He was telling on me for some shit that had nothing to do with me and him, right? But I had got robbed. These dudes robbed me and pistol with me. So, and this is crazy how I wound up not getting in trouble for this. Because, you know, he's supposed to be my friend. He thinks, and I didn't know either. He thinks the guy, the guy's dead because I went back and I shot the guy, right? So they do their whole investigation. He's telling on that. 
they find the guy that I had shot. The guy's in a wheelchair. You know what this guy did? They showed him my picture and everything. This guy said, I've never seen that guy in my life. And look, he knew my first and last name. Right. I knew his first and last name. You know what I mean? So that's why that ended. So I'm like, holy shit, man. I'm like, everybody's just cutting my throat left and right. All these people I've tried to, you know. Next thing you know, he's sleeping with the same chick, with the with my baby's mother. I hate to say that term, but that's what it is. My baby's mother or whatever. Right. You know? So he's sleeping with her. Who? The, the, the prosecutor, the guy that got shot? The guy, no, not the guy got shot. The guy that my co-defendant that I cut loose. Oh, okay. Look, I cut loose him, my baby's mother, his girlfriend, and one of my buddies. He's passed away now, but I'm I, so I'm glad I did it because he was a good dude. Um, I know how you say the good dude thing, right? <laughs> but you know, in our world, he's a good guy. Right. You know what I mean? I like that. So, anyway, I'm totally like, like it's just, it's just like crazy. It's like some type of movie shit. So now this guy's still out there, right? So I already know I'm in prison. I'm about to come home and I'm sitting here. He's still out there. He's running around, whatever, doing whatever. I'm so I'm like, I'm waiting to come home. Well, before I even come home, I'm probably uh, six months to the door. Somebody wound up killing him. He got shot like 30 sometimes or something. Right. So the first thing they think, obviously, yeah, you, you know did, what I mean? Yeah. That I had something to do, but I'm in prison. You know what I mean? They came up to the, they came up to the jail I get called down to the lieutenant's office and I used to sell cigarettes. I would get cartons. Of, I, I would smoke my Newports. I get cartons of Newports and I would get these big bags of tobacco for like 13 bucks and like four figures across the bag. I'd sell for 20 bucks, you know, just hustling and stuff like that. So I'm figuring I'm getting called to the lieutenant's office for that. But the fat lieutenant, he was a fat lieutenant and he used to come in. You could just bribe him with honey buns. You know what I mean? He'd just get, so I'm figuring he's just coming down there telling me, you know, watch myself, whatever. I go in there, it's two cops. It's the one uh, it's the one cop that hates me or whatever. So he's screaming, I got you now, you son of a bitch, all this stuff. So I'm like, what the fuck is this dude talking about? And then there was a white cop. So, and there was never no white cops in um, on their narcotics squad. It was all black. So I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So I'm sitting down. Now the white cop comes up and he's giving me like a massage. You know what I mean? He's like, it's okay, Eric. It's okay. I'm like, what's up? So the other one's yelling at me, you know, good cop, bad cop. So then they show me a picture. First thing they show me is the picture of the guy dead. And I'm like, whoa, you know what I mean? It didn't look too good, right? So then they show a picture of him with my baby's mother because he was under investigation too. You know? So he wasn't out of the streets, obviously. That's how he probably wound up getting killed. So anyway, so I'm sitting there and I act like I play into it a little bit. I'm like, oh my God. So the white cop, he thinks he's got me. He's like, it's okay, Eric. It's okay. Just tell me. It's okay. Unburden yourself. <laughs> right, right. He's like, yeah. what do you think? I was like, you know what I think? I said, I think he got wet the up. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, and I think that you got to get out of here because I didn't request for you to come here. Get out of here. So they wind up leaving or whatever. So I wind up getting out. Now, when I get out, how, how much time did you do on that? That was six years. I did four years on that. Jesus. Okay. Right. You did so four did years. Fun. Yeah. My first time, you know, so, and that's the state. So I wind up getting out. Now at that point, I still had probably around 200, you know, I mean, somewhere around 200 grand that was in my grandfather's dresser drawer the whole time. So I get out, I got money. I start a carpet cleaning business, everything like that. Now, when I come around, the first day I got out, I go up to this, this car dealership. See, they used to sell us cars when we were actually not even old enough to drive. But how we would do that was, you know, but remember back in the day, they would have like the paper tags, you know, the temporary yeah. tags or whatever. So what they would do was, since we weren't old enough to drive, have insurance and all that kind of stuff, every month we would go up, give them like $500 for another tag for another month. You know what I mean? So we would be able to drive the cars around. So I remember this dealership, but now it's um, new owners. So my first day out, I walk up there with like 20 grand cash. I got to get a car. So I walk up there. So they called the old owner, like, who is this guy? The old owner's like, yeah, go ahead, deal with him. I buy this um, Acura RL. Like 3.5. So this is 2003 when I got out. So it was like a 2001 or something like that. And it was the owner's daughter. So it was like, it was nice. 
So that first night, I go to this bar. It's called Tully's. I get shit face drunk. So my baby's mother shows up there, obviously. You know what I mean? So I was talking to some other girl or whatever. She winds up punching me in the mouth. So I leave. But then I take my keys and I leave. And I'm so trashed that, and now it's like January. So you know how you get that, real, well, you're from Florida, so you don't got to, you might not know about this, but you get that real light snow where it's like slippery, okay. you know, so it was like that out. So I'm going down Bel Air Road, probably like close to 100 miles an hour, and I'm trashed. I look down for my cell phone. That's back when the big Nextel cell phones and shit. Right. So I look down for my cell phone. When I look up, I done hit a pole. I done hit a bunch of shit. Car spins. I wind up almost going into the gas station, but I, 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 I just avoided the gas station. So the car's basically almost split in half. And I'm in the motherfucker. The fire fire department stations right across the street. They're coming over with like hitting on the car with like axes and all this shit. So I'm like, oh, I'm like, whoa, whoa, back up, back up. And I was, uh, you know, I was into powerlifting and shit back then. So I'm just like, boom, boom. So I knock the door open. I get out. I I see what's going on. Now I walk to the um. Well, I'm at the gas station, so I go get me a pack of cigarettes. Now, all the police are there by this point. So I, I smoke, start smoking a cigarette, and I just, like, sit down on the curb and, like, pass out. I hear, like, my baby's mother and stuff, like, oh, oh, my God, they're in a car. Man. Oh, my God, he's dead. She runs around the side and sees me laying there. And I just look at her. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not dead. This is your fault, you stupid bitch. You know? So they take, they can't um, breathalyze you or nothing because you're in an accident. So now they take me to um to the hospital. I still had my actual license that, that I didn't get back. You know, they're supposed to confiscate that. So I rolled out of the hospital. This is my first day out. I'm like, I don't understand prison or nothing. And I'm like, damn, I'm definitely violating parole. So eventually I didn't violate parole. So I get a check for, I paid 20000 for that car. And I get a $26,000 check back. Nice. So, right. You know what I mean? So I was like, uh, usually it's the other end. So... I go ahead, um, I'll buy Escalade. So now remember, I'm not selling drugs at this point. But everybody knows I just crashed this car. Now I got an Escalade. And I would come around and I had a real bad alcohol problem. But I would always, I had on all the jewelry, smelled good, looked good, pockets full of money. So, you know, nobody felt sorry for me. It was just like, you know, I'm an asshole. Now my buddy, here's how the feds get on me. My buddy, he's selling drugs. Now he's selling coke or whatever. So they set him up like this. If he wasn't doing nothing big, it was like quarter ounces, half ounces and stuff. So this kid got caught and he wound up becoming like an informant. Tried to set my buddy up for a controlled buy of something small. So they, he meets my buddy at a strip club. Now he comes to the strip club with the cop, but you know, he's an undercover cop. This guy gets up to take a piss, not the cop. The, the informant gets up to take a piss. My buddy slides his number to the cop, like trying to cut this guy out of the deal. Right. He's like, look, you can get better shit if you come directly to me or whatever, right? <laughs> so he stole a customer, but he stole the goddamn wrong customer. Right. So next thing you know, this cop, I guess, is, you know, for quarter ounces, next thing you know, he's calling for quarter keys and stuff. And we had another friend. His name was Eric. And he sold drugs or whatever. So they, they were surveillance in my buddy, and they had called, I think they had called him for like 2,000 e-pills, not 2,000, excuse me, like 200 e-pills, um, like an eighth of key of Coke or something. And he said, yeah, I'm waiting on Eric. So they're doing surveillance. Now they'll see me because we would go out with chicks, you know, me go out to the clubs and stuff. So they would see me pull up now. I'm a drug dealer or a known drug dealer. I'm been out of prison a month. I'm pulling up in an Escalade, jewelry on, everything like that. So who's Eric? I'm Eric. Right. You know what I mean? Even though I wasn't. So long story short on that one, I um they start watching me or whatever with him. And then I did get back into, you know, selling selling coke or whatever. So I go ahead. But even if I wouldn't have, I would have probably get, got indicted anyway. So eventually they they wind up um it was like August of 03. I'm living near Pennsylvania. Now, my younger brother, he's still living around the neighborhood in like the family home, my grandparents' home or whatever. Now, my grandparents, they're not there or nothing like that. My grandmother passed away. I think my grandfather was in the hospital or something. So I get a, I get a call from him. He's like, Eric, the police are raiding the house. 
It's like, right in the house. He's like, yeah, on Kayvon. I'm like, so I'm pissed. I think it's these state police. I'm right around that area. I'm in Baltimore City at the time doing something. I was at a bar club or something. I said, I'm, I said, I'm coming there. So he's like, no, don't. So I did, right? Dude, when I come there, they're, you know, they handcuff me and everything like that. I'm cussing them out. I know nothing's at this house. I don't even live at this house, right? So they don't find nothing. So they have to unhandcuff me and everything. But I did notice this. They jumped in my Escalade and they took my Escalade. So when they're, when they're leaving, now, another thing I noticed, there was a, like a black narcotics cop, but he had on like a, a full mask or whatever, so you couldn't see his face. But he was the only black guy there. This was white guys. I'm like, whoa, this, you know what I mean? They, they might have changed, you know what I mean? So I'm cussing them out as they go out the door. This dude turns around. He looked like, if you ever seen Law and Order, he looked like the guy on Law and Order. He pulls out the, uh, the U.S. Marshal thing or whatever. Right. You know, that big event. He's like, yeah. He's like, we're coming back, Eric. You've never dealt with, with nothing like us. I'm like, yeah, if you, whatever. I know nothing about the feds. Right. So. What about your, your next, car? Well, this is what happens. Okay. Next day, I go to my lawyer's office. All right. So I go in there and he handled a lot of shit for me, you know, like business stuff and everything like that. So I go in there. I'm like, Gary, man, look, I just got raided last night. They didn't find nothing. You know what? You know, they took my truck. You know, I still had another car. I, I, had, I had a BMW. But um, he's like, I was like, can you get this back? He's like, all right, give me a second. And he's like, I seen when he was looking. He's like, oh, shit. So he calls. Now, I'm sitting there with my brother, my brother's friend. He went with me. So I hear the conversation, and it's like, well, yeah, you know, I can talk to him, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Okay, thank you, whatever. It's about a 10-minute conversation. So he's like, hey, do you want, and when he hangs up, he's like, um, do you want him to leave the room? I said, nah, he can be in the room. I said, why? What's up? He's like, all right, you can get your truck back. I'm like, all right, cool. So he's like, but look, he's like, was there a bunch of houses raided last night? I was like, yeah, because you know how they come. They'll hit all the houses at the same time. He's like, yeah, like 20 or 30 of them probably. He's like, yeah. He's like, they're not revealing it to me, but I can tell you this is a wiretap, and it's federal. He's like, and you're not indicted. I'm like, okay, we'll get my truck back. He's like, well, here's the deal. He's like, they want to talk to you. I'm like, so what do you mean? Well, what are you getting at, man? He's like, you know, before you're indicted, they want to talk to you because it's only a criminal complaint right now. And you won't have to go to jail for nothing to deal with this shit. So I'm like, okay, so you want me, so basically you want me to go in there and rat everybody out and all that shit. Right. He's like, yeah. I said, I said, look, it's not happening. Then I was like, tell him keep that truck. I'm not worried about it. So I'm going to leave. And he's like, Eric. He's in your lot. He's, he's like, you're in a lot of trouble. I was like, Gary, you just said I'm not even indicted. He's like, Eric, get prepared because you will be. Matt, two weeks later, knock at my door. Really nice. I, they didn't bust the door down nothing. I look out the window and say, like, what's up, Eric? U.S. Marshals. You've been indicted. Come on out. Don't try to run <laughs> because we got you. You know what I mean? We got you surrounded, whatever. So I'm like, indicted so I go down, I, um, I open the door. They actually let me smoke a cigarette and everything. And then they took me. So as they're driving me to the, uh, you know, how they take you to the courthouse, like, you know, for initial appearance or yeah. whatever, when they first like, yeah, book you. So on the way down there, they're like, um, anything you want to tell us or whatever. So I'm like, nah, I don't want to tell you shit. So you know what they did? They laughed at me. They right. just laughed. They said, they said, don't worry. Other others will. Right. You know what I mean? They didn't bother me no more. So I'm like, I'm figuring it's like the state. So I, I figure you get like bail reviews and I can, you know, pay a bail or something like that. No, no, it didn't work like that. They kept me detained. So I wound up getting, um, I'm pre-trial, you can, know, before every let me, let me ask a question. What were you indicted for? Like I to, uh, 50 kilos of cocaine or more. But you weren't, this is because of the other guy's Eric's name, because they've been using the name well, Eric. No, that's how, no, that's how they got on me when I wasn't selling drugs, but I did get back into selling drugs. Okay. So they did have a wiretap. So they did have a wiretap on you. Yeah. Also. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. And just to mention that, like how people always think you can beat things with the feds, they had a wiretap. So like, say they had the, the warrant to wiretap my phone from like June 13th till um, whenever. 
when I got all the discovery on like June 9th, they were already like 200 phone calls in. So that they were illegally tapping it. What right. they call that harmless error. <laughs> harmless my ass, right? So I don't know how these I don't know how these people work. You know, I'm still young. I've never been with the feds. So now as I'm pre-trial, I don't get, you know, they don't let me out or whatever. I'm figuring, you know, you know, it's it, I, I can beat this. There's no drugs, you know what I mean? I'm not gonna take a deal to let everybody go this time and all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Everybody just, you know what I mean? So I'm actually believing like an idiot that I can beat it, you know? So what happens is as I was pre-trial, they were holding us in the counties back then, like surrounding counties, like on the Eastern shore and stuff, because we didn't have a federal facility. Right. So when I'm in this County, it was called Talbot County. And like the commissary was real expensive and stuff. There was this guy in there, this white guy, he didn't have no money, nothing. So I was like this, I put a, put together a plan. Yeah, um, I get I get an envelope like I, I copied like the NLPA thing, National Legal Professional Associates or whatever. So I had like somebody on the street make their envelope and I was going to stuff it with um, tobacco, dope, you know, what I mean, weed, stuff like that to make money in there. And so I tell the guy because he was broke. I said, look, I said, here's what I'm going to do. I said, I'm going to get this sent in your name. Is that OK? I was like, and I'm going to look out for you. You're going to eat good and everything. He's like, yeah, yeah, do it. <laughs> All right. Look, thank God. Thank God I didn't put drugs in there. So I just wanted to do a, a trial run. So I had to stuff with tobacco. So I had somebody do it. Now they tell me, hey, that's ready to get there. You know, I just did it. So I come up to him. I said, look, that's on the way. He's like, okay, cool. Like two days later, I'm sitting there. I'm playing poker and I'm drinking. You know, I like to drink alcohol or whatever. You know how they make it in, in jail and all that stuff. So I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm drinking. And so, you know, I got like four or five COs. They're surrounding me. So I'm like, all right, fuck. They're probably locking me up for, you know, gambling and drinking. So they handcuff me or whatever. I'm like, what are you guys locking me up for? They don't tell me nothing. So I'm, they take me to the shoe, which is lock up. So I'm sitting there. Obviously, I just lay down, go to sleep. But then I hear like an hour later, my co-defendant was my cell buddy. I hear him and, uh, He's up there. Um, he's up there. They're put locking him up, I guess. So I yell through the vent, Bobby, Bobby, what's up, man? He yells down. Now he's a little guy, and he is a good dude, man. Like if you met this guy, you'd be like, he's the greatest guy in the world. He's a little dude, you know, a little slick dude, talks with a list. Yeah, what's up, man? And all this stuff. All right. So he, he yells through the vent, you're crazy. I'm like, what the dude? He's like, you're going to get us life. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, they got the whole cell. The FBI's in the cell. Uh, I probably wasn't the FBI. He's like, they put crime scene tape and all this shit around the cell, right? I'm like, what the, like, locked it down or whatever. Okay, just my luck. And so I still don't know what's going on. But I was reading a newspaper article of this guy. He snuck a gun into, like, one of the jails in D.C. or something. And he was going to try to, you know, get out by using a gun or whatever. They caught him. I'm reading that article. It's laying on my bunk. It was in USA Today. So here's how this all ties together. So I still don't know what's going on. So they transfer all of us back to like Supermax. So as they're transferring us back to Supermax, it's me and the guy who set me up. But I don't know at this point he set me up. I just think they might have caught something in the mail and, you know, they figured out maybe over the phone or something. So he's acting like he don't know what's going on. So now we get there. They had like a few tiers where they held federal people. They didn't take me there. They took me to where they held the state guys. You know, the guy's doing like five years on lockup and stuff. So they like stuff me back there. They don't tell me nothing. Okay. So I'm like just sitting around. I'm asking CEOs questions. Nobody knows nothing. Well, the liaison for us between the marshals and, you know, the inmates or whatever, Sergeant Ryan, she comes up. She's like, look, the marshals are coming up here tomorrow and, you know, to see you or whatever. I'm like, what, what's going on, Sergeant Ryan? She's like, Foss, they're talking about some escape or something. I said, what? So she's like, I know, I know. So now this marshal gets there. They pull me out. And he says, uh, he was a straight shooter, though. And he's like, uh, look, Eric. He's like, I'm just going to ask you one question. He's like, have you ever tried to get anything into Talbot County? So I said, look, I said, I'm not going to tell you from who, anything like that. But yes, I have tried to get tobacco in there. He's like, okay, I'm going to end this investigation now. And now I'm going to tell you what it's about. He said, that guy that you had doing that in his name, 
He's like, he's, he's been, that's what he does. He, he sets people up, you know, to try to, you know, whatever sets people up to try to get out. And all. I was like, well, what's, what's up with him now? He actually got released because they would lock him up on like petty shit, like violations. I think he was in there for a violation. So that's how, that's how that went. So I'm telling the guy, I'm like, yeah. So there was like one of these little, he took like a little piece of metal and left it in the van. Like one of them little hand, I guess you could open up a handcuff with it or whatever. You know them guys in prison, they know all that yeah. fucking shit. I'm not like that. You know what I mean? I don't know none of that shit. So I'm like, so what was the deal? This guy had told them that I was in a gang. I was a leader of a, uh, uh, an Aryan gang. I'm from Baltimore City, dude. <laughs> I'm not in no, first, I'm not in no gangs, period. But an Aryan gang, like, I didn't even know that we had them, honestly. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, well, that's not true. He's like, hang on. He's like, the guy said that I was planning to escape. And if he didn't help me, I threatened to have his family killed. And that um, it, um, I was trying to get a gun in to the jail to wind up killing, you know, to kill the police and leave. And I had that stupid ass article I was reading. You know what I mean? So I'm like, I'm like, dude, this ain't. He's like, I know it's not true. The investigation's over. He's like, I just want to give you a few tips because you're going to federal prison, you know, so you need to know what you're up against. So I was like, no, 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 that's not true. I'm not going to federal prison. I'm going to beat this. I'm in this. You know what I mean? This guy looked at me. He's like, ah, Eric. He's like, I'm just going to tell you, man. He's like, you're going to federal prison. So they, okay, well, thanks for the heads up or whatever. So. That was the first experience of like, it's just like, like some movie shit. I'm like, man, this shit is just like made up. So I wind up getting, um, I wind up getting Gilmer or whatever. They wind up giving me 12 years because what they did was they charged me with 50 kilos of cocaine or more. And just like how, like you got, you're a fraud guy. You know how they work the money, like 10 million, you're on this level, yeah. 20 million, you're on this level. Yeah, yeah. That's what they do to us with drugs. The federal sentencing get, guidelines, they, they. Yeah. Right. How many people are under you? That sort of thing. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm like this. I'm I'm looking at this shit. I'm like 50 kilos. No, I can't plead guilty to that. Well, eventually it came down to an evidentiary hearing. So we're going to have an evidentiary hearing. And I was a little bit like I only got an eighth grade education, but like I've tried to educate myself. Like when I was on a run down in Florida, my girlfriend used to go to Florida Atlantic University. And so I would like go into the, you know, I'd go into the classes also. And I was, you know, sit around because you know how the college shit is. It's just a big, like basically auditorium for right. classes, you know, got a guy speaking and stuff. So I was looking at it and it was like by the preponderance of the evidence, preponderance of the evidence. So I'm like, man, preponderance of the evidence. What about beyond a reasonable doubt? So I had it put in there that the evidentiary hearing, you have to find me guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. And they did. They put that in there that they would try that. So I wound up finding um, a Fourth Circuit law, which is a circuit I'm in, which actually says you're only responsible for what you did. So I use that in our, our, you know, they do the memorandum. So we file another memorandum back to them. And that's the law that I used. So like two two weeks before the evidentiary hearing or whatever, my lawyer called me and was like, no, nah, they, they backed out. They conceded. So they conceded to like a kilo and a half, which is only a five year mandatory minimum. Now, when we go in for sentencing, we're not going to disrespect them and ask for five years, you know. So we asked for like eight years. This is right when the Booker passed, the Booker law passed, that made the guidelines advisory. Right. The judge had leeway as long as he determines a fair sentence. So we're asking for eight years. The prosecution's asking for like 16 years. So I didn't lose or win. The judge met in the middle. I got 145 months, which is 12 years, one month. So that that was... um. So I'm, I'm younger at the time. So I go ahead. I get to this, this an FCI. They sent me to an FCI, and it was uh, Gilmer. It's in West Virginia. This place was wide open. I mean, this was wide open. Like, it's just like, it was like a party. You know what I mean? It was like a party. So I get in there. I get into a lot of the gambling. I had, like, you know, um, I was the bookie. Had the biggest ticket on the yard. I had, I had a blackjack table, a couple poker tables. I had people running poker tables for me. And like I said, I stayed drunk all the damn time. So I'm there for like four and a half, maybe five years. The SIS, which you know is like the investigator or whatever. Right. Like that, they hated me and like the unit managers hated me. The COs really didn't hate me. They liked me. You know what I mean? They were just like, you know, they really didn't for me. But 
they were such pricks. Like the unit manager, they kept me in a three man cell for like four years. Like, <laughs> like even when cells would come open and stuff, they'd be like, nah, you're not getting in that. So I would tell people when they came to my cell, you know, like when I would get a new cell or whatever, I'd be like, look, man, if you're in here like trying to straighten out your life and shit like that, that's probably not the cell for you. But if you like to gamble, drink, you know, and, you know, just do whatever, he's like, come on in. You know what I mean? So eventually what happened was the SIS was on me, but they could never do nothing. So we were selling, um, we were selling dope. We were selling heroin. And I didn't do it like hand to hand or whatever, but I had, you know, I, there was a buddy who would get a lot in or whatever, and he couldn't, he couldn't sell it because he would get robbed. You know what I mean? Right. So I was like, oh shit, give it to me. I'm not going to rob you. Here's how we'll do it. So next thing you know, they get on, you know, somebody tells, somebody's always going to tell. That's one thing I learned about the feds, man. Like, look, it's 90%. Yeah. Like you got all these guys in there with their chest they poked out. Promote it. Yeah. So. <clears throat> They're investigating us for that. So they catch my celly. They try to run down on them and catch them with drugs, but they don't. But they piss test them. And we smoke weed. So he failed the piss test. So they give him like 40 days for a dirty yarn. So he's getting out and I'm throwing a party for him. I get all this wine and shit like that, some good shit. So I'm getting trashed. You know, I'm, I'm definitely trashed. So it's all of us. And at this point, I wound up getting a real good cell. I had one of the big handicap cells. So everybody's in there hanging out, drinking and stuff this night. Now, I was too loaded. And it's not, it, this wasn't the CO's fault. You know what I mean? So I'm on a tear, shit faced. The CO comes up to me. It's like, Foss, we got like an hour left. Just lock in yourself for the night. Right. I'm like, okay. I go, I probably stayed in there five minutes, 10 minutes. And then I come wandering back out or whatever. So now he calls the um, he calls the code or whatever. They come over to lock me up, and I won't handcuff up on the tier, you know. So they're like, I was like, I'll handcuff at the lieutenant's office. Now when I get to the lieutenant's office, they go to breathalyze me. When the guy goes to breathalyze me or whatever, he's like, I know you weren't drinking alone or some shit like that. It was like a rookie guy or whatever. So I was like, smack! I smacked the breathalyzer out of his hand. And it was one of the good ones, like the digital ones. Right. It wasn't one of the cheap ones. That thing busts. So, you know, we all get to wrestling around and stuff. And there was this lady, man, like this, 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 this nurse lady or whatever, but she was huge, right? So I'm doing okay with the cops. She hit me like with a, with a, with a nice tackle. Boom, I'm laid down, you know? So I wake up, I wake up the next day in the shoe, obviously. Now I was blackout, I was blackout drunk. So Matt, you know, I don't know if you've ever drank like that or whatever, but like you can remember like bits and pieces, but you don't know, really, you really don't know what happened. Like what I'm telling you is what's been told to me, <laughs> you right. know what I mean? And this was me, you know? So I'm sitting there and this SIS guy comes to the door. He's like, yeah, you up now, Foss. I was like, what's going on? He's like, you assaulted my officers. I'm like, son of a bitch. Now, I don't know how bad this is or whatever. So... I was like, well, where's the shot? Where's the ticket? He's like, we can't give that to you because it's out with the FBI. I said, the FBI? He's like, what, you know, they, they send it to the state's attorney, the federal attorney, to see if he wants to pick up the charges. Yeah, which, so you got to wait. But they almost never do. Right, right. They didn't. So they even send out fist fights now. You know what I mean? Shit like that. So you, they can't give you a ticket until they decline it. Or, or yeah, they got to decline it. Or else that's actually double jeopardy, which is weird. So three weeks go by, they declined it. I get the ticket or whatever. So now I got to go to the DHO, to the hearing. Now we go in there and the DHO guy was pretty fair. You know, he takes like all my shit for commissary for 18 months, phone for 18 months. They're sending me to the penitentiary, you know what I mean? So I'm not, you know what I mean? I'm not really worried about that. So he goes and he's like, he opens up a magazine and he showed me. He's like, look, this is how much this breathalyzer costs. It was like $399. It's like 400 bucks, right? So he's like, now you have to pay that. You know what I mean? So he put that on there as my restitution or whatever. So I go back to my cell or whatever. My counselor comes walking by later on in that day. He's like, hey, what's up, Foss? You seen DHO today, right? I'm like, yeah. He's like, what they charge you for that breathalyzer? I'm like, man, they charged me like, um, I was like, they, they charged me 400 bucks. He's like, yeah. He's like, don't worry about that. It's not 400 now it's 800. I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? It's 800 bucks. 
they switched it over. And now what they did was they froze my account where I couldn't even buy a stamp. I couldn't buy a bar of soap, nothing until I paid that 800. But now I'm going to the penitentiary so I can use other people's phones and all. And they're not worried about that kind of shit. In the penitentiary. Yeah. They just don't want people getting stabbed. So when I get there, I'm doing all that. So now when I first show up there, they send me to Big Sand, which it, it has a name of being violent yeah. and stuff like that. But at this point in time in my life, you know, I'm, I'm in my early 30s at that time. So at this point in my life, I've done been, I mean, I've been in jail when I was 15. You know, I've came up through juvenile, places like that. So obviously you're a little bit leery. You know what I mean? Anybody say they're not worried is like they're lying. You know what I mean? Because you've heard the stories, yeah. you know. Most of it's bullshit, but like some of it's true. You'll see people get killed and stuff, but whatever. So I wind up getting there. So now when I get there, it's like the, the jail was locked down because the Muslims and the Crips got into some war in front of the chow hall or whatever. So I got a cell by myself. Now, this is like these idiots, and like, you know they have done these, these guys are in prison, right? So I got a cell by myself. So there's this kid... Um, now, you would hear at night. Now, you really would hear this. You hear scraping on the floor and stuff because everybody carries a knife. So people are making knives. And when the doors do, do hit and you come off lockup, somebody's going to get stabbed because somebody showed up, you know, has a hit on them or whatever. Half the time, the guys who have hits on them is because some scumbag gang members or whatever just don't like them, you know. So this is a, an example of that. Okay, so there's this kid, Kenny. He's a younger, he's a younger white guy probably like 26. He's from Detroit. Now he's got a bald head. He can't grow hair or whatever, but he's not a gang member. None of that shit. He's like from the city. So I tell him, I was like, Hey, why don't you move in my cell? So he's like, okay, cool. So I move him in. About four days go by. I come in from the yard. He's sitting in, he's sitting on the bunk and he's like this, like uh, looking all goofy. It's some fucking pamphlet. Right. So I'm like, man, what are you doing? He's like, um, E, I think you need to know about your people. I'm like, excuse me? He's like, your people. I was like, what are you talking about? It's one of them racist pamphlets or whatever. I said, look, first off, dude, I said, I know about my people. My people are the people that I go make a phone call and they send me money. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's my people. I don't know about all this, this other shit. I said, and I recommend that you don't get into this type of shit either. I said, because these guys are all scumbags. So probably two days later, he comes in the cell. Matt, his whole head was like blasted with like Nazi signs, pictures oh, of Odin. God. I remember this kid's from Detroit. <laughs> so he's like this. Yeah, E, you like my tat? I said, no. I was like, I think you're an idiot, right? You're a jerk off. So anyway, with him, we split. Um, we wound up splitting up because that was like receiving. Now, Big Sandy had so much violence going on at the time that the yard would be split. So basically, like, if I was on A unit and you were on C unit, they might let us out at the same time, but you'd be on the softball field side, I'd be on the basketball court side. We couldn't, like, you know, wreck with each other because it was just too much for them to handle. So Kenny, I wind up going to B side. And when I go to B side, I guess they put me in facilities or something. That was where, like, Unicorn facilities. B side was, like, actually chill. You know what I mean? Right. Now, A-side was like where a lot of the gang members wanted to be because, you know, they all wanted to be together. So Kenny gets moved to A-side. Now they work in the chow hall. So I come into the chow hall to eat. Kenny's like wiping the tables where he walks up to me. He's like, hey, what's up, B? I'm like, hey, Kenny, what's up, man? So he's like, man, he sits down for a second. He's like, man, he's like, hey, I should listen to you. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, you should always listen to me, but what are you talking about? You know what I mean? So he's like, uh. He's like, you know, about joining the gang or whatever. He joined the Aryan Circle. You know what I mean? I call him the Aryan Circus. You know what I mean? So I was like, yeah, yeah, I told you. He's like, man, they just want me to do something. I don't want to do it. I was like, look, Kenny, I don't want to hear no more of the conversation. I told you, you know, I, I hope you're the best. Well, the whole thing was this. Here's what that wound up happening with Kenny. I guess some guy who they didn't like was showing up from another jail. And Kenny's the new guy, the prospect guy. Right. They hand Kenny a bone crusher, which is a knife that they made. And they say, look, this guy just hit the compound. It's his job now to go stab this guy. Kenny's not like that, man. So what Kenny does is he takes that knife and you got to walk through corridors in the penitentiary. Like you don't go outside like the 10 minute move in the yard. You go through all corridors and it's cages that like shut it and stuff. 
So Kenny walks through the corridors. You know, he's supposedly going to stab this guy. But Kenny made a beeline for the goddamn lieutenant's office. He goes in the lieutenant's office, boom, throws the knife on the thing and says, look, you got to put me on PC or whatever. These guys are trying to have this guy killed. They're trying to make me do it. So, like, I guess the whole rest of his bid, he had to be on protective custody, which which would suck, you know. And it's this kid never got involved in that stuff, you know. So, um, and then he's got to go back to Detroit and he had a detainer where he's got to go to jail there with all that shit on his head. So, I mean, Kenny's probably dead. Right. You know that's I mean? a bad, yeah, that's going to be a lot of problems. Right. So there were like, um, it was a lot of instances like where, like, I seen the fakeness through a lot of these guys. Like, um, there was an example, um, this guy, uh, this guy Wiser, he was like from California and he's like one of them guys, he's trying to start the white thing and, you know, skinhead or whatever type deal and shit. It was so up, mad that I'm bald. Right. So at that time I was losing my hair. It was going really thin. And I wanted to shave my head, but I wouldn't even shave my head because I didn't want nobody getting it mixed up. Right. You know what I mean? So I got to run around like an idiot. So anyway, this guy, this kid Scott shows up. Now this kid Scott's from Pittsburgh. He like robbed a bank with a BB gun. So he only had like whatever, less than 10 years, some shit like that. So he's actually one of the ones who didn't get manipulated by these guys. Like all these other guys, these kids that came in from the East Coast. They're all shaving their head, acting like they're racist and all wanting to join these gangs, get these goofy tattoos. So basically, um, this kid Scott, he was just like, nah, guys, I'm cool. But Scott was a smaller guy. He's probably like five foot eight, probably 160 pounds. So they didn't like that. So this guy, Wiser, he's got all these dudes that were that should have been sticking up for Scott, but they're he's got them all in a cell. And now I walk by the cell. They're in there sharpening knives. So I walk in. I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? They're like, why is it? What's up, E? What's up, Big E? You know what I mean? I'm like, no, I'm chilling. What's up with you? Yeah, we're going to get this Scott. We're going to stab. We're going to kick his fucking teeth out. I was like, why do you want to do that to Scott? You know what I mean? He's like, because I know he's this. I know he's that. He he needs it. He needs it. I said, okay. I said, listen, man. I said, um, what are you saying? He's like, well, he needs to show me his paperwork. I said, dude, the guy's first off, he just got here. I said, I said, second off, why are you worried about his paperwork? You know, you're in a gang or whatever. You worry about your own people or whatever. She's like, no, he needs to show his paperwork because he's this and that. I said, you don't even know this about it. So anyway, I I wound up backing him up into a corner this way. I was like, let me ask you a question. I said, why don't you ask me for my paperwork? He's like, huh? I was like, yeah. He's like, I know you're good. I said, how do you know I'm good? Because I'm 6'2", 250. I'm tatted up. You can tell this ain't my first rodeo. Is that how you know I'm good? I was like, as a matter of fact, I said, I got my paperwork. I said, but um, I want to see everybody's paperwork. I said, I'm going to go get mine. It, somehow they spun out of that. But let me say it like this. I wasn't trying to cause no confusion. I didn't really care. I was just trying to save Scott's ass. Right. So now I run down there to um to Scott. And, you know, I tell Scott what's going on. He's like, yeah, I already know or whatever. I'm like, look, Scott, man. I said, look, I said, I'm a ride for you. But, like, you know, you can't can't go checking in. I don't know this type of shit. You know what I mean? I said, because this could get serious or whatever. So I get moved over to the B side. And Scott and all them are still on C side. Now, he wasn't like the type of guy coming in the yard or nothing like that. So it had been a while since I've seen him. So I'm like, I hope they didn't stab him or nothing like that. So these these guys, they all come out to the yard one day. And I call him over the fence. I was like, hey, the guy Scott from Pittsburgh, he's still in there. Oh, yeah, he, and he's good. He got his paperwork. I said, yeah. I said, I, I knew he was good. I said, but I, where's your guys at? Did you guys still, did you guys produce anything yet? You know, and I was just kidding with him or whatever. So basically, basically what wound up happening is like the guys who always poke out their chest, they always wind up getting exposed. The guy Wiser, he was probably there another month or whatever. He wound up getting stabbed or whatever because something was fucked up with him and all that kind of stuff. So that was like that was like a real eye-opening experience, like because it was just like just the fakeness of everything. Right. It's just like, I mean, you think you committed fraud? These people live fraud every day. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're sitting there, they're they're all lying, and it's like they they want you to do all this stuff and all like you know they're manipulating people. I'm like, how am I going to? And I got a little chip on my shoulder, too. It's like this. Dude, I, the way I grew up, I grew up with, when I was younger, selling drugs and all, 
I'd make my, I'd have my little bit of money so I could buy whatever or whatever. My uncles, they would be crawling around, stealing my money, shit like that, because they were junkies, you know, so I'd be mad, I'd beat them up, whatever. So I was like, this, I'm thinking like, man, I've been smacking junkies around since I was 15. What, you think I ain't going to do it when I'm 30? You know what I mean? Or I'm going to have a, a, a drug addict loser tell me how to live, you know, because all of a sudden, all these guys got all these high morals, you know what I mean? Like, oh, this and that. You can't talk to this. Like, you know, you miss me with all that stuff. So eventually, I wind up, uh, my points dropped because I've never been, like, convicted of violent crime. Right. So my, point, so my points dropped. Hey, wait, wait a second. Wait, wait a second. So I want to tell you something. I don't know. if Did you ever hear uh, me talk about changing the guy's paperwork? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, that dude, yes. like, I felt bad for him. And the moment he was placed in a position where he could demand people's paperwork, he starts demanding. It's like, wow, you're, you're a piece of shit, bro. Like you. Listen, I, um, I actually, uh, this was before my, my, I had seen you on, um, Chad Marks' show. Okay. Right? Okay. And that's the first time I seen you. And then, you know, but I was like, just skimming through. So then I guess my buddy, this is a buddy of mine. He hits me up. And he said, man, did you see this guy? It was, it was about that. <laughs> this is, hey, look, I was stoned out of my mind, too, dude. I was sitting there. That, uh, the black guy, Big Herc or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah. He did or whatever. So he's talking about this and that. He's like, man, this guy's acting like this and that. I say, hey. I say, he's telling the truth. He's like, huh? I was like, he's telling the fucking truth. I was like, this is what really happens. I was like, you look, I figured that out. Because I did wind up going back to federal prison. I'm just going to put this in here real quick. Um, I went back to federal prison. I went to Allenwood. They started in the low. I didn't last 20 some days or whatever, but they threw, I got thrown out. And I got sent to the medium. So when I get to the medium, here's how I figured a lot of this shit out too. But I knew about people doing that fake paperwork shit. So when I get to the medium at Allenwood, Matt, everybody on the unit had good paperwork. No. Right. That's impossible. There's not, see, this is one thing people don't understand. And, you know, kids need to know this and stuff. There's no honor amongst thieves. There's no such thing as a good car. You know what I mean? Right. And, you know, how people will even say a good dude. Well, maybe this guy's a good dude to you, but guess what? To somebody else, he's not. Right. You know what I mean? Because everybody's got that, you know what I mean? So there's some people who like me, some people who hate me, you know, just like relationships in life, you know? You, 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 you might marry a woman or I might marry a woman that some other guy couldn't stand. Right. You know what I mean? So she's this to him, but she's this to you. So that's just like the regular stuff. But like when I went to Allenwood, dude, you, like when I watched your shit with Big Hurt, I was laughing my ass off because I'm like, dude, this guy's nailing it. And like, you could have really, I mean, you could have busted him out. Like, yeah, well, I, cause he's told, I told you I was, yeah. I was concerned. <laughs> I mean, you know, there, well, yeah. you don't realize it when you see the video, but. Yeah, there was it, it like that. That could have gone bad for me. I mean, they, both of these guys are like he's a he's a big guy. His cameraman's a big guy, and I and I could see the more I was pushing, I was like, oh, this this is these guys are getting really aggravated. You still push though. You, you were still I did, pushing. but I mean, I stopped. Like, every, like I could have gone like full tilt, and I was like, yeah, you yes. better calm the down. You're gonna get, this may go bad. It's COVID, and you're in the middle of a an empty hotel room in downtown L.A. Like you you got enough. Nobody's coming for you, so. Well, also like a situation like that is like this. Um, a lot of times with the fake people and you can't even talk to them because their first thing is when they're painted in the corner, they want to react with violence. That's, you know yeah, what I mean? That's what I was concerned with. Or sit there screaming at the top of their lungs and, you know, but I mean, what the stuff that you're saying is actually, it's accurate. You know what I mean? And that's what I told my buddy. So, I was dealing with all this flim flam stuff and I know all this stuff from experience too, because I'm always one. Look, I was never that guy, man. I look, I was never that guy. I don't give a, you know what I mean? What these people done, who they told them. now, like the child blessers and shit like that. I hate that shit. You right. know what I mean? I have smacked them up, check them in shit like that. But that was in my younger days. But, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not nobody to, to speak on your situation. Right. You know what I mean? I'm not nobody to say that, you know? Okay. What guy wants to sit in prison? You know, like a lot of people say like this, um, you know, like I've never, I've never cooperated, you know what I mean? But guess what? I've done over 20 years in prison. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm always the target. I'm always the one they're coming after. 
You know what I mean? So I can't sit here and tell a person like, hey, don't do that. That's not, I mean, that's not fair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I look, their business is their business. But like, just like the these- first time I was saying, just like your first thing, like the, the people that you're trying to, I've realized right away, the people you're trying to protect are actually cooperating against you at that moment. You know, you, I, I didn't have to see that more than once to realize like, oh, this, this isn't the way it works. Like this is, you know, and then you go and you actually do some time and you, you meet some people and you realize, oh, this is, this is up. I'm going to end up doing 20 or 30 years. Well, everybody else is going to go free. And, and in the end, nobody cares. Like I'm in mortgages. Nobody's stabbing each other in mortgages. I'm in, you know, banking. There's nobody, there's nobody's getting shot. That's another, that, that's another thing too. Like with, with what you're, what you're in. That kind of stuff. Name me one fraud guy who didn't cooperate. Right. I'll wait. Right. I'll wait. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because that's, that's part of their game anyway, because the feds actually probably want to, you know, I'm just assuming, you know, the feds want to stop or know how to do certain things and stuff like that. So it's like, dude, you're not, look, even look, what pisses me off is that the guys, these same guys that are screaming and stuff like that about like a fraud guy or something. They're supposed to be street guys, but they look, they move the goalpost for yourself. Or, or like I said, or if a guy can fight, they're not going, he could, you can see him with CNN testifying and they'll make an excuse for him because he can fight. All right. You know what I mean? Or he'll kill you. You know what I mean? So I've been through all that stuff. Like, um, and I've just, I've been set up. You know what I mean? I've seen what's happened, like in, with the tough guys. I'll tell you, like what happened to me. I, saw, I stayed at Big Sandy probably like 18 months. I didn't get in no trouble because, see, Big Sandy, it's hard to get in trouble. It's very hard. Like, and the police are actually a little bit, you know, they're told, like, to leave people alone because, like, I'll give you an example. You know how they do census counts? Yeah. Like, to see where you're at or whatever, whatever time? Yeah. Well, my job was supposed to be facilities. Now, to this day, I can't tell you where facilities is at in Big Sandy. I didn't go. So they did a census count. It was a rookie cop or whatever. So he comes on and he it's like 12 o'clock census. Now my, my celly, he worked in Unicorn. So I'm there, you know what I mean? Just chilling. So he's like, what's your name? I'm like, Foss. He's like, Eric Foss. I was like, yeah. He's like, why aren't you at work? So I, I busted him down, man. I said, I put him on. That's the best mode. I said, cause I'm in prison. That's why the fuck I ain't at work. He's like, okay, have a good day. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they don't do, you know what I mean? So he don't know if I got life sentence or whatever, you know? So basically like when I get to, um, I get out, of, I get out of big Sandy. I had clear conduct, everything like that. So I get down to, um, Schuylkill in Pennsylvania. Now this was one of the most cruddy places in backbiting situations I've ever been in, dude. And it's the scumbags that are supposed to be tough and all this shit that do this type of shit. Like, um, I had a cell buddy, uh, Tony Ayala. He's like 72 years old. He's like uh, associated with a mob, whatever. So he winds up moving in my cell. And I liked old Tony, you know? And I'm this type of guy, man. I'm, I'm, I respect everybody and stuff, especially older people. The guy's doing a life sentence, you know, for drugs because he didn't want to lose his properties or whatever. But, um, Anyway, so he moves in. So me and Tony become pretty cool, you know? Now, they give him an operation. The BOP gives him an operation to mop, like, this dick up real bad or whatever. So he, like, blood and everything. Like, it was bad, man. So anyway, he was like, you know, he's like a pack rat. He's like a hoarder. So the cell was always up. He's got his shit hanging everywhere and all. I mean, what do you want me to do? You know what I mean? I'm not going to, you know, these case managers and unit managers, like, what do you want me to do? You want me to? Cuss, I'm not going to cuss the old man. I'm not going to do that. I don't give a, you know, I'm on the yard every day anyway, you know, and I like the guy, you know, he's doing life. So they wind up separating us. They, they separate us from, from uh, each other. Now, this was actually, uh, this was actually the second time this happened to me in this place. So basically what happens is, you know how you always got the head orderly? Yeah. You know, the head orderly has got to talk to the police. You know, they, they got to tell the police everything and shit. So anybody, you know, usually that's the head orderly. And usually they're junkies. Well, this head orderly was a junkie. And they knew the old man had money and everything like that. And he had, like, a couple big gold chains and stuff. So what they do is, I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if he told the counselor. The counselor had them separate us or whatever so they could pull this move. So they move him in a cell with somebody else. So I'm like, I'm kind of like happy. They move him in another cell. I'm kind of like happy, like, it's Christ, a clean cell and shit, finally. You know what I mean? So after 4 o'clock count, Tony comes to my door. 
He's like, E. I'm like, what's up, Tony? He's like, they got me. I said, what? He's like, they got me. I was like, what are you talking about? Somebody stole out of my lock. He can't even really speak English, so he's just saying his locker. I said, what are you talking about? They broke in his locker and stole his gold chains. So I'm pissed. And then back then, I was in really good shape. You know what I mean? I could do cardio for forever. You know what I mean? I, you know, I was always strong and shit like that. So I'm heated. You know, so I fucking beeline out of the cell. I run straight to Ed Orly. You know, so I'm going to break your neck. These, these chains don't come back. Oh, you're going to. Yeah, you did. You know, so we wind up getting one chain back. So the head order is acting like he's doing his investigate. I know you're behind it. All right, you gave one back. Okay, in a couple of days, give another one back. You know what I mean? Just I don't I don't want no problems. I'm going home in a couple of months. Right. But I'm just I'm just so pissed off, you know. And none of the Italian dudes are really taking his back or nothing because you know they're they're not getting into nothing. They won't. They'll they'll shoot their best friend in the head, but they'll come to prison and steal a tomato. Right. You know. <laughs> it's like, come on, dude. What's wrong with you? So. Anyway, so I'm, I'm beating the drum about this shit. So uh, I'll go to the yard the next morning, like a couple or a few days later, whatever. So I go to the yard, I do my cardio, I do my uh, my weightlifting, where you know. So it's about to be yard recall at ten thirty. I walk up to where all the Italian guys hang out. You know, they call it bar deal or whatever. So I'm sitting there, I throw my bag down, and then there's this little Italian guy, Frankie. Right, he's he's all over the place. He's like. Um, you know, always talking and shit. So, so we're sitting there talking. He's like, E, E, what the fuck is that? I said, what are you talking about? So what the fuck is that in your bag? I said, what do you mean? He reaches down. He pulls out a big ass piece of like a big screw and it was sharpened. So as I was at rec, apparently somebody put that in my bag as, you know, you sit your gym bag yeah. or whatever. So, so that when I go back through the metal detector, I would have got, you know, knocked off. They're trying to get rid of me because I'm sticking up for an old man. Right. So, you know, these are these tough guys. You know what I mean? These are the tough guys. They, they go after old men, you know, all that kind of shit. And that was the second time that happened. The first time that it happened at Scoop Kill, I think the police put a knife in my cell because my celly, his name was Larry. He was like, he was older. He had already been in like 20 years and we had a, um, a sports ticket together. But they hated Larry so much anyway because he'd been there so many years. And he, Larry wasn't that bright. Like, well, I'm not going to say that. But he had been locked up for so long and he didn't understand like the shit that you understand. And I understand like these are scumbags. You know what I mean? He has the head orderly holding like 400 books of stamps, which is the currency. Yeah. Like, you know, you know, each book is worth like, so that's like $2,000, you know, so he's got the head orderly holding that. So the head orderly sets it up to get Larry, you know, thrown out of the jail so he can keep the stamps. So, um, I hear that they got Larry on the walkway, you know, so I'm figuring it's for the ticket stuff, you know, so we, I, I had all the tickets, you know, the, the master sheets and all in the cell. So they locked the jail down. So obviously they just locked Larry up. They're going to come search my cell. Obviously. I know this. I wind up getting, ripping up all the paper, flushing all the tickets, all the contraband in the cell. So here they come. They get to the cell. They're like, anything in here? I'm like, no, nothing's in here. So the cop goes like this. He's like, you sure no knives are in here? I'm like, yeah, I'm positive. He goes, I guess he reaches under like the locker, like under Larry's locker. He goes, whoa, what's this? I said, are you serious? It was a, it was a, a first off, it was a toothbrush with a razor tape to it. Now you're telling me that I can get rid of all these tickets and all this kind of stuff, but I could have thought though, well, just take this apart. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So obviously it wasn't mine. It wasn't Larry's. Now, I don't know if the orderly put it there or we're gone or if I, I honestly think the cop did it. You right. know what I mean? Because he's walking me to lock up. He's like, yeah, don't think I put anything in your cell or not. I'm just like, man, whatever. So I get in there, me and Larry Sully's and I was going home, you know, within a year or whatever. So Larry still had like 10 years left. So he was just like, he's like, hey, he's like, yeah, I know that was for me, man. He's like, I'm just going to take it. You know, so he wound up taking that shot and then, you know, they had to let me out, you know, and I was, I was back there. That was like hell, dude. I was fucking up. that, that shoe. It was, I was only there like 30 days and that shoe, it was so hot. It was summertime. There's no air conditioning. Okay. Mm. You will like, you know, you, you get your breakfast in the morning and you eat like the coffee cake. Yeah. So, you know how, like if you eat real hot food, like spicy food, you'll sweat. Right. Dude, if you just from digesting the coffee cake, you will break out in the sweat. 
Like, this is how hot it was. I probably went in the shoe probably 230 pounds. And when I got out, I was like 198 pounds. I didn't work out. I didn't do nothing. That's just from being sweating. You know what I mean? It was a, it was like a sauna. So that's when I got out of there. And then eventually that all happened with the um, the old man Tony or whatever. So I wound up getting out. I wound up getting out of Skuku. So when I get out of Skuku, I go to the halfway house and I come home. So when I come home, I'm pretty much, I'm on a straight and narrow. So that same guy that I told you, he had the same name as me. He wound up. He's like, you know, he looked out for me when I was in prison and everything for not throwing him under the bus or whatever. But he had a, um, he was a certified appraiser and he had an appraisal company. So like I, like I said, technically it's fraud, but technically my name is Eric and his name is Eric. Right. So he had me showing up. I, you know, I needed a job and it's hard to get a job as, you know, getting out of prison or whatever, felon or whatever. So he's like, look, man, come work for me and do appraisals. Cause he hated like. I think even his girlfriend broke up, and he's, like, kind of weird. He would stay in the house, didn't like to go out around people. I think he got on drugs, pills, or some shit. So he didn't like going out doing the inspections. And so, like, when you're doing appraisal, you got to go physically do the inspection, you know, take all your photos, everything like that. Then, you you know, you take upload it. Then, you you know, you do your appraisal report. So he had me doing the inspections. So I'm showing up, and he threw me to the wolves, man. I got a box on my ankle. I'm in the halfway house still. And I'm going into these homes, right? So he started me out. He started, but I, I learned a lot. Like, you know what I mean? I learned a lot on my own because he started me out just throwing me into houses, like in like neighborhoods, like where I'm from and stuff like that. These people don't give a shit. You know what I mean? They don't care. They don't ask you a bunch of questions and all, all that kind of shit and all. So I would just show up. Hey, I'm Eric. I'm the appraiser, you know, which I am Eric. And I'm, I'm really not the certified appraiser. I guess you call me a trainee or whatever. Right. But I mean, it was good money because we're splitting it. You know, each appraisal is like four. And you've got the box. Yeah, and you've got the box out. I mean, they they see the. No, they don't see oh, it. Okay. Dude, I, yeah, I got to cover up my tattoos and everything. I'm sweating like a pig, man. <laughs> I got to wear long pants and everything. So he's basically throwing me to the wolves. I don't know really shit about nothing. I don't know what recess lighting is from a goddamn radiator you know what i mean right. at that point you know but i learned like but uh so i'll go into them type of houses you know a lot of people doing their reverse mortgages and shit like that you know that uh, jb nutter would send it everybody and just, you know just make sure the house is still standing you know so i wind up learning some stuff and this is what i learned too i wind up going this he gets so lazy he's just sending me to everything now, I get this house. This is what you want to avoid. You want to avoid the middle-aged white guy who walks around in a tie and black socks. and You know, you, just, you want to avoid this guy. So, I go to one. I, he said to be one of them houses. I get this house. I start doing the inspection. And he's like, um, he's asking me all kinds of questions. You know, I don't know. If, I didn't understand if something was under contract or, you know what I mean? I didn't know none of the lingo, you know? So I'm just like this. I'm looking around the house. I'm like, fuck, we're busted. You know what I mean? But I look for something I could talk to him about. He had this room full of all this football memorabilia. So I'm like, oh, shit, LT, LaDalian Thomason. Well, man, I remember when he had 29 touchdowns. You know, I started talking to him about sports, you know what I mean? And just was able to manipulate my, my way through like that. But once I started learning... Because I would come back and I would study this shit myself. Like, there's, you know, I'll, I know more than him, honestly, about the inspections, about FHA and everything like that now. You know, so one time I get thrown into this fucking house and this guy, see, now I know what's going on. This guy's in financial trouble. He's trying to refinance. Right. So I got off the night before or whatever. And I, look, you know, the appraiser, you're supposed to be the middleman. You're not supposed to have a dog in a fight. But, you know, I don't really give a shit now i wouldn't rip off banks or nothing you know what i mean nothing like that like you know if the bank was going to lend the money i'm not i'm not putting fake photos in or nothing like that but i'm also not climbing up in scuttles and looking to, i'm not doing that stupid shit so or, or if you got some flaking paint i'm, I'm just going to be taking another picture be like look just paint that you know what right I mean? so i go in there and I, I catch this white guy he's and he's just a prick man he's acting like he's so rich and shit like that and then this is what i when i started figuring out people were you know what I mean? I'm so I, I look at it. I'm going fast. An inspection takes me 20 minutes. You know what I mean? Not even. I'm just going through. Click, 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 click. All right, have a nice day. You know, which they should want. Well, he just wanted to stick his chest out. So he's like, this doesn't look like a proper inspection to me. 
I said, you know what? I said, you're absolutely right because it's not. I said, now check this out. I said, so I'm going to get out of here because I'm not doing a proper inspection. And we're going to send somebody in here who's going to take pictures of that flake of paint. Who's going to go down there and see that you got the cover off of this. Who's going to see right there and see that rail and it's shaky. You know, I know what you're doing. You're trying to refinance. Now, do you, do you want me to send that guy? You want me to send that guy? He's like, no, just, just do your job, man. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I was doing that and I wound up getting my real estate license. So I wound up doing that and then start flipping houses and stuff. How was getting your real estate license you had? Did you, how does that work there? I mean, I know a lot of felons that have gotten it. Did you have to take the test and everything first and go in front of a board and answer some questions that like they make you jump well, through some hoops? Here's where, here's where I, was. I told him I was a convicted felon. Wait. If I'd have never told him, they, 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 they don't really check that shit. Man. Oh, okay. Like the, the commission. Well, up here, I know. Well, here's here's what it was. Um, by me telling them that, okay, I go, I take the, um, I take you, you know, you, you take the course online, okay, the, the the CCE shop or whatever. I think I took it through there or whatever. So I go ahead and then I go down and then you take like at the at the community college, you take like the pre test or whatever, and then you go to the it's like PSI place it's called, and like when you go in, they take like your cell phone and everything, so you can't cheat. You know, so then you take your national and state on the same day. So I wind up passing that. Now, when when uh, then you log in and it's like, congratulations, you passed. You know, so you got to, you know, you know, you got to take take your license and you you take it to a broker and just basically, you know, you hang it in their office like Remax was my broker. Or right. whatever. So that's just, you know, that's just who's backing up. But when I hit the thing, like to get to get whatever the, the, the actual license or whatever from the uh, Department of License Labor. It wouldn't give it to me. So I'm like, Jesus, what the hell's going on? So I went to my broker. I'm like, man, he's like, he's like, did you tell him you're a convicted felon? I was like, yeah. He's like, man, you shouldn't have done that, right? But what they had me do was I had to get all like my old like court cases and stuff like that, what I was convicted of. And I took it down to some, it was down on Baltimore Street. I took it to some office and I gave that to them. And it took probably about like two weeks or whatever. And the real estate commission, they, they approved me for my license. Okay. So, they, but they're, they're really worried about, um, they're really worried more about like DUIs and like, you know, like sex charges and stuff like that. Cause you know, like when you're, you're going to showings and stuff like that. But I do know this because I was looking at, I think it is, it is tougher in Florida. It is, it is a little bit uh, tougher in Florida because I was, I was around that time I was going thinking about moving down there, but I didn't do it, but I was looking into like the real estate license and stuff like that in Florida because every, every, everywhere is, um, is different. Like my license is, um, was well, expired now, but when I had my license, it was reciprocal to Oklahoma and Pennsylvania, which I believe means, cause I never tried it, but I, I believe that means like if I went up to uh, Pennsylvania or something, I would be able to do, you know, do a deal or whatever. If I took their uh, state exam, I would be able to go into that place that day. And take the exam, so you wouldn't have to go through a bunch of stuff. But it wasn't, you know. I mean, that's only two places it was: Oklahoma and Pennsylvania. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I, I don't know. I know people who, who have who have felons, drug charges, been to prison, everything. They've got out the same thing. They had to take the test. They, you know, they answer the question you know, because they'll they'll they charge you to run your license. You know, so, I mean, to run your a, a background check. So they say. They tell them, but they, if they just go to them and say, look, here's what happened. I, you know, I went, I was selling drugs. I was young. This is what happened. I went to jail. I did eight years. I got out. I've been clean. You know, I've been off probation. I'm good. They're going to, they're going to say yes. You know, yeah. They're gonna, yeah. Okay. So, so, so it's basically the same thing. Yeah. But they want to know you know, cause you're right. What if, what if it was, Hey, you know, oh, it was kidnapping. It was, you know, then it's like, okay, okay, wait a minute. You know, this is getting more, although I know a guy who, you know, had a murder charge that, you know, but that got his yeah, license, well. but, but it was also, he hadn't been in trouble in you know, 10 years. And so I think a lot of times they're, they're concerned with, um, with fraud more than anything else. Yeah. Yes. But I also know a, a chick that was my co-defendant that got her real estate license, but that wasn't in Florida. That was in, um, um, is she in Indiana or Illinois? She's in Illinois but I'm assuming she could have gotten it in Florida because she only had one charge, but she did all of it. Like every one of these people did prison time. It's not like it was probation. They all went to right. prison. So yeah, I think you can get it. I, I think most people can get it, you know, but most people shy away from it that they don't want that. They think, Oh, I can't get it. 
I'm a felon. Right. No, that's not what it necessarily means. Yeah, I also, like, when I did my carpet cleaning business, I did fraud before, too. Like, and I can talk about it now. I'm pretty sure it's actually... Well, no, it all got... They just wa washed it on the water. What I did was this. Like, when I first got out of state prison, I told you I did my carpet cleaning business, right? So, what I did was, back then, we didn't have social media. So, you used to have to advertise in this thing called the Penny Saver. You know, like, one of them, like, yeah, yeah. things is just coming. So, you know, the big coupon that, that falls out, like, in the middle... I was on like Domino's Pizza might be on one side and I, I paid to have my company on the other side. So they would do it. I was paying like 20 grand a month, but I was going, my ad was going into so many houses, you know what I mean? Like a million houses or something. And you pick your areas. Like I didn't even do Baltimore. Nobody's getting their fucking car to clean in Baltimore. You know what I mean? So I would do like Northern Virginia, you know, um, PG counties, places like that. And um, so there was a lot of money, you know, just to run the ad advertisers, a lot of fucking money yeah. that people don't understand that. So I was doing that. And then I screwed up, man. I was, um, I had been locked up. So I wanted to go out and party and stuff like that. So I had my partner, Hogan. He was, um, you know, he's, he, I met him because when I first got out, the job that I got while I was on the box was as a carpet cleaner. He was my crew chief. I was his helper. So we did that for like one day. I said, look, man, we're going to start a, uh, our own business. He's like, how are we going to do that? Where are we going to get the money? I said, don't worry about that. I said, we're going to start our own business. That way it made it easier on me because now the home detention people, we were set up in, in his apartment. That was the office. So they were not going to come to Glen Burnie and check on me or whatever. So we started doing that. Now it was decent. So then when I come off home detention, obviously I want to go out and have some fun. You know, so it was like a month that I was out and my, I had paid for the advertising. And like, when I say 20,000 a month, people got to understand, yeah, you pay 20,000, but then that month rolls over, you know what I mean? So you'll still have appointments booked for like two, you know, two months, right. whatever, but you're also rolling the dice because nobody might never call. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's 20 grand down the train. So I leave everything up to hope. I'm like, look, I'm gonna go chill. I'm gonna hang out with chicks, whatever, you know, you know, do whatever. Now my little brother, I used to pay him like 600 bucks a week in cash. And he would, he was like our, our helper. You know, he would go out with Hovick, stuff like that. Go do the jobs. I would usually chill at the apartment and stuff. So basically, um, Hovick screwed everything up. I, I'm in, the, I'm right around the neighborhood one day, me and this girl. So I see my little brother and then they're all hanging on the corner, you know? So I pull up, I'm like, Hey Jesse, why did you at work? He's like, man, I ain't been to work in like almost a month. I'm like, what? He's, I was like, well, what about Hovick? You know, because I was just ignoring everybody. You know what I mean? So I was like, what about Hovick? But I'll try to get in touch with him every time. It just goes to, you know what I mean? It goes to the voicemail or whatever. Now, you know this, man. If if I'm paying this money for advertisement, and I told him, Matt, I gave him the best deal in the world. I said, just put the money back. Keep all the profit. You know, he put it back in our accounts. Now, he had his, now, he was, he was, a, he had his own thing. And we had set up to take credit cards through the merchant thing. That was actually in his name, New Life Carpet Care. I was A through Z Carpet Care, but we were using his merchant. Right. You know, because you don't want to show up at a house. They want to pay with a credit card. Oh, we don't take credit cards. Right. How's professional is that? So all you had to do, that's back when Next tells. So the, the key to it was you couldn't download apps and, you know, your bank and all that stuff on Nextel. Right. So what I did was I come back around. I see Hogan screwed everything up, dude. He was like selling our jobs to like this other guy. You know what I mean? When he get when he get him or whatever. So he's doing drugs, whatever. So he screwed up the money. So I get mad at him, you know, whatever. So I'm like this. I'm pissed off, man. It just cost me a bunch of money. So I'm hanging at this strip club. And I notice, I notice these like guys like come in there all the time. Like they're like Russians, you know, foreigners, you know, them type of guys, you know. And they're spending big money. So I always knew all the chicks and stuff. So I I, I go to the bar mate. I said, Hey, I said, let me ask you a question. This is my first one I did. I said, this guy over there, I said, um, what's his deal? He's got a lot of money. Uh, she's like, yeah. I was like, he's got his credit card and everything. Like she's like, yeah. I said, what does he spend? She's like, he spends a ton of money. And he would get prostitutes and everything like that. So I'm like, all right. I said, look, I give her 500 bucks. I said, look. I said, give me, give me his, uh, all his credit card information. Or you couldn't see how to write it down. You couldn't snap a photo. Cause we didn't have all that back then. She said, uh, so she would write that down as expiration date. You know, the, the thing on the back, the three, three numbers, like five, six, one, whatever. Right. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to try this shit. So I get all that. I go in the bathroom 
and I run his credit card for like four grand. So boom, it goes through. I come out, I sit down, I'm sitting there just drinking my drink and I'm watching. I'm watching him if, if, he, if he gets a phone call, if anything, nothing. So I, I get out of there, I tell Hovick, I say, hey man, because it would take three days to go pick up the cash. I said, in three days, man, you got four grand coming, go get it. You know what I mean? So it worked. So I'm like, holy shit, right? So I start doing that shit like every night. I did it for like a month. That's all I did it for. I got like 70,000, you know what I mean, cash. And then they wind up calling Hovick. They're like, you know, this is some type of fraud or whatever. So Hovick calls me up, man, we're going to prison. Oh my God, and shit. I said, no, 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 we're not. Shut the up. I said, you see all the invoices we got that are empty? He's like, yeah. I said, start filling them out. Right. He's like, what do you mean? I said, start filling them out. We clean their carpet. You know what I mean? So he's doing all that and shit. And then plus I had a, I had leverage because look, these guys, are, these guys are out there cheating on their wives, all this kind of stuff. So what are they going to say? No, is it a strip club? You know right. what I mean? So basically at the end of the day, it wasn't prison or anything. The insurance, their insurance, act because it was 70 grand. So their insurance actually, whatever the merchant place was, whatever, their, their insurance covered it, but Hovick can never have that in his name again. Yeah, yeah. I was going to yeah. say they closed the account and he's on a list some, somewhere. But yeah, it's not, they're not coming after you for the fraud. Right. But yeah, that's, that was like, I was like, man, that was, that was like taking, taking candy from a baby. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, I've, I've done a lot of that type of shit. Well, not a lot of fraud stuff, but I've, I've been involved in like a lot of the real estate, you know, and trying to do my own businesses and stuff like that. But like drugs always gets involved. Like the last time when I got out of Schuylkill and I was doing the appraisals and got my real estate license and stuff. Now I was honestly, I was doing good. I, um, I would use that for like, I really use my license to like do a flip on a house because now I don't got to pay when I list it. I can list it myself. Right. You know what I mean? Be, uh, so I was doing that. And then I did get back into, I did get back into the drugs and stuff like that. But uh, I caught a bad break on, like I got put into another conspiracy. I got put into another conspiracy that I'm really not, I really wasn't in it. So I'm out doing whatever. I have a buddy. He was, uh, he was under investigation. So I'm headed down um, the MMA fights down, down Baltimore arena. This guy, John Rallo, he actually got MMA legalized in Maryland. You know, like Joe Rogan's talked about him and everything. Right. He used to be a fight, whatever. So John's cool, you know, so I always supported his stuff and all. So what it, what had happened was he, my girlfriend, my girlfriend got me uh, tickets for my birthday. Well, my birthday's August 30th. This wasn't until October. But, you know, she got him on my birthday. So I think it was like October 6, 2018. So uh, we're headed down there. My buddy's under investigation. And he calls me. Now, I had um, I had just got back from New York because I was like right around my birthday. I'm like, man, fuck this. I'm going on a bunch of trips and stuff like that. So I would go up to New York for like two weeks and then come back. And now I was right in between going to Vegas. I was headed to Vegas like October 19th. So this is October 6th. Now, I guess my buddy's under investigation. I'm not. My phone's not tapped. None of that shit. He calls me up. He's like, yo, what are you doing? I said, I'm going down to MMA fights. He's like, oh, all right, cool. I might stop down. I'm like, all right, cool. I said, but if you do, make sure you bring your girl because I'm with Stacy. Stacy's my girlfriend, man. That's like, she was a good person, man. Like, she was a square. Like, so, like, she's a really good person. Like to this day, we're not together, or whatever, but like she's just one of them people that's just like an awesome person, you know what I mean? Great person. So I don't want her to think, and I didn't cheat on her, none of that type of shit. So I don't want her to think uh, he's going to show up with another chick and her be like, man, when he's out, he's probably doing that same thing. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm like, make sure you bring your girl. Well, in the, at least in my city, in the inner city, girl is cocaine, boy is heroin. But that's not for like drug dealers. We don't talk like that. You know what I mean? When I was a drug dealer, we don't talk like that. That's for like drug addicts. Like they'll be like, who's got the girl? Who's right. got the boy? You know what I mean? So I'm saying make sure you bring your girl. Like what it so they indicted me for that, man. They wound up indicting me for that shit. So basically, I'm I'm not never figuring nothing because I'm really not doing shit. Like this is how this is how dumb they are. I had like when they raided. They raided our house. We had a townhouse at Perry Hall. And um, so it's this house is nice, nice townhouse. There's no drug traffic. There's never been a drug in this house. I've never had drugs around her. 
You know what I mean? She knew that I did certain things on the side and all. My stash house was right in Baltimore City. It was actually a house that was um, it was about to be foreclosed on, but I was doing it. I knew the guy, and I was like, you know, I'd show up there and like looking like I'm rehabbing the house. So in my bag, I got a bunch of you know pounds of weed, you know, coke, whatever. So that was my stash house. So here's how you know, like they weren't even looking at me. So they wind up. They, uh, I went to Vegas. I come back from Vegas. I stayed there like a week. So when I went, my same friend he lent me. Uh, I had one. I had one luggage bag, and I but I was staying for a week, so I needed you know another bag. So he lent me what like one of them Louis Vuitton, Louis Vuitton bags, where it's like seven thousand dollar bag, or whatever. You know, I don't give a shit about that, but whatever. So he lends me that. So I go ahead. Now, if you're surveillance and all this kind of stuff and you're talking about stupid shit, like they had surveillance of me going and fucking buying a pack of cigarettes and buying beard dye because I dyed my beard. You know what I mean? So you're telling me if you're really on your shit, me and this guy are handing, he hands me a big Louis Vuitton bag. And then when I came back from Vegas, I hand it back to give him back his bag. There was nothing in it. Obviously. Right. But like they could have painted that picture, you know, so they weren't doing too good of surveillance is my point. So when they wind up, um, wind up, that was, uh, I get back from Vegas probably the end of October. So now this is almost, I think it was like November 14th. They wind up, uh, we, we go out, we go out for dinner, me and her, and we have a nice dinner, come back, you know, do whatever. Now we're in bed. Like we're, this is a normal house. It's, it's her, me, my dog, and her two daughters, which are like 13 and, and 10 at the time. You know what I mean? There's no drugs in this place. <laughs> no, not at all. No drug dealers, no none of that shit. And it's a, it's, a, it's a suburban neighborhood. So we're in bed. Next thing you know, it's like all this smoky shit like through the house. And you're hearing like echoes and all. And Shiloh's up. Like, you know what I mean? My dog's up. So I'm, I'm, you know, I was having a few drinks and stuff. Like I said, I'm, I'm clearing my head now. Stacy's like, Eric, Eric, something's going on. So I see all this shit. So I'm like, all right, all right, hold up, babe. So I go, I look out our back window, <laughs> and it's, you know, we got a grass alley. It's not like an alley where I grew up, where you got a bunch of goddamn concrete and rats and shit. You know what I mean? Cats, stray cats and shit. So I'm looking out of this grass alley. Next thing you know, boom, there's like a red beam on my head. I'm like, oh shit. So I weave out of the way. So she's like, what's going on? Now I hear him down there screaming, Eric, calm down, Eric, calm down. I was like, it was like something out of like a Will Smith movie or something. They're military, they're military clothes and all this shit. And so I'm like this, I'm like, okay. She's like, what's happening? I said, we're getting raided. She's like, for what? And I was like, obviously for me, babe. You know what I mean? She's like, well, what'd you do? I said, nothing. You know what I mean? So I was like, don't worry. So I figured, look. I go down there, you know, my hands up, everything like that. Walk down the steps backwards. I said, look, guys, I said, I'm surrendering. Now, if you're doing an investigation, you know this ain't that kind of house. You know nobody's in this house. They're just trying to show off. Right. So they cuff me. They're like, who's in the house? I said, my dog. I said, um, my girlfriend and her two daughters. I said, please. Nobody has nothing to do with nothing. This is about me. I said, please, just, you know what I mean, just... Don't shoot nobody, you know, just take it easy. Nah, they can't listen. You know what I mean? They don't listen right. So they got me cuffed. Next thing you know, they get they bring them down on the um uh, and they sit them on a the couch. Uh I'm not sure if they had cuffed them, but Matt, they got their guns right in these little girls' faces and my girlfriend's face, screaming at them. I mean, these people have never been through that. I feel guilty to this day. These people have never been through this shit in their life. Right. So I, fuck, I flip out, you know what I mean? I flip out, I start spitting on the police and everything, trying to, you know, try to throw karate kicks at them, all kinds of shit. So they're like, man, these nuts, get them out of here. Because they're supposed to, they actually brought the, they x-rayed my walls, you know what I mean? Looking for money. There was only five grand there, like for a little less than 5,000 bucks cash. Because it was, um, yeah, I always kept that kind of cash like around a few grand or whatever, you know? And also, um, oh, five grams of marijuana. Weed, right. which is a ticket. It's a fifty dollar ticket. That's what's in the house. So they don't find them, but they start screaming. You know, I mean, they're screaming at me and shit. And uh, they're like, "Get him out of here! He's a nutcase!" And all this kind of stuff. I'm not a nutcase, dude. You're locking me up. I understand that. You could have texted me. I would have came outside. You know, what right? I mean? 
And obviously, they threw their concussion grenades, some type of smoke grenades all through the house. I'm like, you know, I'm pissed about that. But, you know, when you're you're sitting here, you know what time it is, man. You don't got to do that to these people. You know what I mean? So they send, uh, so they get a regular cow. And this guy looks like, like, Opie Taylor. You know, he's a young guy or whatever. So he's a red-haired guy or whatever. So he's like, he's scared to death. You know, you see, it's snowing out. Now, I'm in my, um, I'm in a pair of sweatpants and just my house slippers, you know what I mean? And like a wife beater I'm wearing. Like, they don't even let me put clothes on. It's snowing out. So as the guy, as the regular cops walking me out, he's like, he's like, boss, listen, I don't, uh, I don't have nothing to do with this. I'm just, I said, I know what you're doing, man. I said, you're doing your job. I said, I'm not, I said, I'm not even mad at them if they were just doing their job. You know I said? I'm not that type of dude. You know what I mean? You got to take me to jail. Come on. So as I walked out, there's this fucking cop runs outside. You know, they always got to be a tough guy. He's like, he jumps in my face. He's like, you think you're tough? I was like, nah. I said, matter of fact, I know I'm tough. So he's like, um, he's, cause I was mad at that point. So he's like, he's like, yeah, what if I take these handcuffs off? I said, you take these handcuffs off. I'm going to knock you out. And he's like, well, I'm not going to do that. I said, I didn't think so. You know what I mean? So he locks, uh, Obi Taylor or whatever takes me to jail. So I'm sitting there. And it, I'm in a precinct, like White Marsh precinct. So I'm like, I still don't know what happened. I'm thinking like, like I said, I was doing some shit on the side. Like, here's how stupid they are. I still had like, at my stash house, I still had like 10 pounds of weed, about 200 of them weed pens. You know how they're like legal now or whatever? Right. Like I was, I was getting them back in the day. You know what I mean? I would get them sent. So I had like 200 of them, uh, you know, some Coke, probably like 18 ounces of Coke, something like that. You know, my Lexus is parked right in the driveway of the goddamn uh, stash house. You know what I mean? So, this, so if they were so much, so smart, why didn't they raid that? But they didn't. But anyway, um, so they take me to jail. So I'm at White Marsh Precinct. Now, nobody's telling me. Nobody's telling me what I'm locked up for. But obviously, I know it's for some type of drug dealing or something. But I'm really not selling drugs like that. You know, I'm not really that big into the drugs. That's not like my whole thing. So... They're trying to put pressure on my girl or whatever. Like, and like she, I give her credit for this. She, she said like this. She said, look, because they, she worked for BG&E, Baltimore Gas and Electric. They wanted to take her, and she worked from home. They, she'd been there 20 years. So they wanted to take her actually desktop computer. Like they didn't wind up taking that. But that was for her work. That's for BGE. She's got nothing to do with this. So they took all their phones and all took them to a lab. And then they asked her, they said, um, you know, do you know anything? You know, whatever. She said, look, all I know, so you're saying my boyfriend's a drug dealer. He's telling me he's not. I believe him. Right. You know what I mean? That's the truth. Nothing was ever around her. So um, as I'm at the precinct, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. Next thing you know, this black dude comes in. He had got raided, I guess, at the same time. I don't know this guy from a can of paint. So I'm like, you know, how do you start talking? It's just you and him there. So I'm like, yeah, what's up? He's like, yeah, they raided me four in the morning. I said, yeah, me too. So another guy shows up. Another black guy, he's like, yeah, they raided me four in the morning. I'm like, yeah, me too. So then everybody's like, you know Jason? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Right. Like, yeah, it's probably got to do it. So anyway, they get us to the, um, they get us to, to Baltimore County Jail. This happened in the county. So they get us to Baltimore County Jail. Now, when they get us to Baltimore County Jail, uh, I walk in, I see Jason right there on the phone. You know what I mean? He's making a call. He's like, yo, what are you doing here? I said, I'm just coming to say hi. You know what I mean? What do you think I'm doing here? Dude, I'm in a bullpen with these guys. It's probably like 10 people. I don't know one of them. You know what I mean? And like, I'm, I'm from, listen, I'm from the, I'm from the streets, man. But like, I cleaned up my image. Like, not all the way, but like, you know, like tattoos, like even I, I kind of regret some of my tattoos. The tattoos are accepted nowadays and stuff. But I mean, these guys all got like gold teeth. You know what I mean? They're, you know what I mean? They're, they want that image. You right. Know, they wear the big, you know, they're like how when I was a kid, I used to wear the three finger rings. I had to, you know, all that kind of shit. But I was 15, 16 years old. You know what I mean? So I'm looking at the bullpen. I'm like, geez, this is going to be a real embarrassment. You know what I mean? Like, like what the? Now, I don't know none of these people, but Jason. So obviously they give me no bail. So now this is a, this is a, um, this is a county, you know, state charge at first. But Jason, they had caught at one of his houses. They found four kilos of Coke. Okay. So. So you're the house I've never never been there in my life, none of that kind of stuff. Like I said, I don't know really none of these people, but I know Jason. So he's like, yo, you'll be all right. Shit like that. You ain't got nothing to do with none of this. Yeah, I was going like, to say, right, have, cool. have you put it together that you got slipped into an indictment that you have nothing to do? Like, had you already put that together? Yes. Okay. Yes, at this point. 
Now I'm at the embarrassment point. You know what I mean? I'm at the embarrassment point. So, I'm, But I'm still figuring, okay, this isn't the feds. You know what I mean? Now they said that some people were going to go federal on this case. So obviously Jason, this other guy, G, you know. So they got caught with shit. Guns, drugs, everything. I didn't get caught with nothing. You know what I mean? I'm really not. Like I said, that was a year-long investigation. They picked me up in that investigation on a, like two conversations in like um, October. They ended the investigation in November. So how much could I be involved? And like what they were doing was like when I got, so I'll get to that point, like how they, they, they lie. So I'm sitting there. I go for the bail, you know, up for bail or whatever. Obviously they deny me. So I'm sitting there. So we're in county jail like three or four months. So I hired like two different lawyers to do bail reviews and stuff like that. Cause I'm like, you know, lawyers want you to go ahead and pay a bunch of money up front. So I'm like, I, I know how the process works. So I'm like, look, I'll just pay this one for a bail review, this one for a bail review. So when I went on the first bail review, there was no listen, if this would have been stayed with the state, I'd have I'd have I'd have walked right through it. It was nothing. So they we get into for a bail review. Now you got people all in the, it's not like federal court. You got like a bunch of the public in the courtroom and all. So they got to put on a show while they're not giving somebody no bail. Right. The prosecutor stands up and says, Your Honor, we think he's one of the biggest fentanyl dealers in Maryland. <laughs> At first, I've never been charged with fentanyl. Right. And I've never even seen fentanyl to this day. You know what I mean? I, I don't know what that shit is, and I wouldn't sell that shit anyway. So they denied me bail. I hire another lawyer. Finally, we get a judge that's assigned to our case that's going to be overseeing our case. This is going to be our judge. I get to have a bail review in front of her. She kind of gave them hell. She's like, well, what is this man locked up for? Well, you know, we believe he's this big time drug. You believe this. Right. You know, you know, where's your proof? Well, you know, which, you know, this, and then they said, like, this, this could be a federal, you know, the feds do want some of these people. We're not sure who or whatever. She's like, look, the feds will know where to find them. I'm releasing them. She, she released me on home detention. So I was like, okay, cool. You know what I mean? I, that, I'm pretty much figuring, why would the feds pick me up? You know? So I get home. I get, I go to my lawyer. He gives, he gives me all the discs and stuff like that. The discovery that he's gotten so far. So me and my girlfriend, we're sitting there and we're going over um, the conversations. Now they got thousands of conversations, but we're just worried about mine. So we look at this conversation. It was a pertinent conversation. That's what they call it. It's supposed to be me. It's a guy on there. He's a white guy, but he talks like this. He's like, yeah, Doug, I'll be right there, my bro. You know what I'm saying, Doug? You know what I mean? Now, look. My girlfriend's like, you don't talk like that. Like, see, a lot of people get it screwed up because now we do now South Baltimore, the guys from the city, the white guys from the city kind of do talk like that. But if you're actually from the city in Baltimore and you're around my age, I can't speak for these kids or whatever, but you're around my age. This is how the white guys talk. Right. You know what I mean? This is how we talk. Like when I first talked to Jeff or whatever, and um, he's like, you sure you're from Baltimore City? I was like, yeah, I'm positive I'm from Baltimore City. You know what I mean? He's like, well, no, you just don't sound. I said, no, 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 no. So that's that's the county guys. Those are the, you know, they want to be. You know what I mean? They're they're the, you know, they want to be something that they're not, whatever. You know, but that's just their accent. Right. So it was a guy who talked like that. And my girlfriend's like, that's not even you. I was like, obviously it's not me. So I'm like, I'm feeling very confident, man. I'm feeling really confident. You know, because I would beat this. Next thing you know, Probably three weeks later, two weeks later, or whatever. I'm on the box with the state. Here they come, like eight o'clock in the morning. Now, instead of just coming to the door, you've already raided the house. There's nothing there. They didn't even raid the house today. They still got to make a big scene out. Boom, 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 boom. Eric, we got you now. We got you now. This is how dumb they were. This is how dumb they were. So this cop, he wants to be, he wants to be a federal agent so bad, but he just, I guess he just could, could never make the cut. So he's still like, He's still a state cop or whatever, but he like deals with, you know, with the feds. He's like a liaison where so they they handcuff me or whatever. He's like, Yeah, you're done now. Because now we got the evidence. This is this is federal, man. This ain't stateside. I said, you jerk off. It's the same evidence. Get the guy out of here. Here's how dumb he was. When they get when I got my discovery, and you know, to get no knock warrants and stuff like that, they gotta put people's records there. They didn't even know that I did 12 years with the feds. 
That's how much they knew about me. They thought that I'd never been with the feds before. They didn't even know nothing. You know, so I'm like, man, this guy's a real jerk off, you know. But anyway, so I get over there. Now, I, like I said, I had that box on my ankle. So I get over there that day to the, uh, you know, the federal courthouse or whatever. So all of a sudden, all of a sudden, now when they're arresting me, the box is going off. They didn't even tell the goddamn state that they were locking me up. So now I got an escape charge. You know what I mean? For like running from the box. No, I'm locked up. The feds came lock me up. So they don't need to tell the, they don't need to tell them. So a lawyer shows up. Like I'm okay. I know this this much. Do not pay for a lawyer in the feds unless you're really going to go to trial or you're really going to cooperate. Right. There's no other point to pay for an attorney. There's right. no point. You know what I mean? Because it's just cut and dry. So all of a sudden, I'm sitting there. You know how they um, appoint you an attorney or whatever. Yeah. So I'm sitting there. Yeah, I'm sitting there by myself or whatever. Next thing you know, this guy Jose runs in there, Jose Molina. And I had used him and I had my buddy use him on the street for DUIs and shit like that. So Jose shows up. So as soon as he comes into the room, I, through the screen, he's like, Eric. I'm like, yeah, Jose. I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, you might as well leave, bro. I said, I don't know if Stacy called you or whatever. I said, I'm not paying you to take this case. You know what I mean? He's like, no, they appointed it to me. So I never even knew he was on that panel. Right. So we try to get out. We go for detention here or whatever. And I, you know, I'm probably not going to get out. But I figured this time maybe I could because I had a lot of positive things going on. So I had her there. Um, I had a guy, one of my buddies, he owns um, he owns a construction business. And I had a few other business owners and stuff. I had people because I was doing um, I was doing programs. Now, you know, I was using some drug money to do this. But I was doing like shit. Like I would do bees or better, I would call it. And basically, like, a lot of times I would go to, like, uh, parents who really didn't have money, like a lot of single mothers and stuff. And if they had little kids in school and stuff, I would sit there and, you know, if, if their kids, like, would, um, if they could average a B or better, you know, for whatever quarter and, you know, prove it, you know, show yeah. it, I'd, I'd give them $200 or let them get the whatever pair of tennis shoes they want. You know, so I was doing stuff like that. So, you know, I had people, I had a lot of people writing in, you know, like, when I had my detention here, there was a lot of stuff like for me, but they weren't trying to hear that shit. You know what I mean? They don't care about none of that. So they detained me, you know, and um, I sat there. And now the thing is, is like, when I looked at the charge papers, you see that now they break everything down to everybody, everybody's role in the, in the conspiracy. My role was nothing, Matt, no mandatory minimum, no nothing. It was like, you know what I mean? Should and one thing about the feds: after 15 years, you've been out of prison, your record drops off. Right, they can't use it to enhance you or anything like that. So the weird part about it is, like well, my first federal sentence, I was a category five. You know what I mean? Which you know, there's only six categories. Yeah, yeah. This one, this one, I was a category. I was a category um three, which it should have been a category two because they gave me a point for a DUI that I actually got a probation before judgment and completed it. But anyway. So I wasn't facing that much time. You know, if I would have went to trial, if I would have went to trial and lost, the most they could have gave me, I think, was like 63 months. That's the most. If I go to trial and lose, you know, so it's nothing. Yeah, but you're facing going to prison for something you didn't do. You're on a conspiracy right. that you have nothing to do with. Exactly. Well, here's the point. So people do say that. People say to me, well, you know, if you didn't have nothing to do with it, why didn't you go to trial? I said, well, two reasons. First reason. They detained me. I'm going to sit there close to three years waiting to go to trial anyway. Right. You know, I'm going to sit in a fucking scumbag jail. You know what I mean? Prison is better than jail. You know, also another thing, the drug amounts. Now, remember, I have co-defendants on this. I don't know who's going to go over there and talk to them people right. and start pumping up them drug amounts, you know, because, because listen, man, I, I was... I wound up pleading guilty to 400 grams of coke, right? Which is less than a half a kilo. A half kilo? Stop it. Within a month's period of time, dude, I'm, trust me. It, it, it was more than that. You know what I mean? Right. But, so I, I want to get this shit over. I want to get it rolling before any of that can happen. And then they start charging, and then I get these mandatory minimums and all that kind of shit. Because I got no mandatory minimum or nothing. So that's why, like, when people ask me, like, well, why didn't you go to trial? And then another thing, I would have lost. Yeah. You know what I mean? 42 months is better than 63 months. You know what I mean? All day long. 
So I wound up getting that. I wound up, I wound up going, and the thing is, you know, I, I played. Look, I wanted to get this behind me so fast. This, this is this. I pled guilty and got sentenced on the same day. And you know, that's that really don't happen. Right. But I, I requested that to happen because I just wanted to put it behind me. You know what I mean? Because I, I, it's, it's just a horrible experience. Like you know, I'm like Jesus, man. Why, why is this happening to me? I, you know, I'm sitting there. I, I remember it hit me. I'm sitting there on the phone talking to my girl or something. And I look up and I see these same damn green walls at this damn Supermax. Well, I call it Supermax. It's Chesapeake Detention Facility. Now it's a federal facility, but it used to be our old Supermax. So I call it Supermax. So I'm sitting there. I see the same green walls. They haven't painted the walls in the last 20 years. You know what I mean? It's the same busted little window right there. I'm like, this again. I was a free man, totally free and clear. So I was fucking depressed, man. I just wanted to get that shit over with. And that's when... um. So I do all that, whatever, and uh, you know, I didn't get convicted. Like how I'm telling you, that's like the weakest drug charge ever. I should have never even been federally indicted, but I think they took something personal. You know what I mean? Like you know, I was going to beat it with the state, so they just like send this idiot along for a ride. You know what I mean? So I wound up um, going over there. I got 42 months or whatever. So it's time to in court. Now the first time I went to court, federal court, and you know how you talk before you get sentenced. Yeah. I said a bunch of stuff like how I regret this, how I regret that. And this time, man, I stood up and I said, look, I said, I'm not going to apologize to this courtroom. I said, I'm going to apologize to the people who supported me, the people who are majorly disappointed in me right now, the people who are standing by me. I said, I'm not going to apologize to this courtroom. I said, I shouldn't even be in this courtroom right now. I said, this is this is a joke. You know, so the judge is sitting there, you know, she's like, because she said something like, um, <laughs> this is what she said. She had the nerve to say. She said, uh, she looked up like um, how I've been in prison before. She's like, and she's seen, now she's from Baltimore. You know what I mean? So she knows how lenient they are in Baltimore City. She's seen my first ever case as as a younger guy, first ever conviction or whatever. She's seen I got that six years. And she's like, wow, you've never gotten a break. I was like, yeah, that's true. She's like, well, you're not going to get one today. You know what I mean? So the guidelines were 37 to, 40, to, 37 to 46 months. So she gave me 42 months or whatever. Which my guidelines should have been under 50 grams of cocaine, truthfully, you know, but I just copped out to the 400 grams because I just wanted to get it over with, you know, before anybody could go pumping anything up on me. And then I was right. That whole case became a whole, like, I hear about it all now. Like, everyone's saying how this one did that one, this one did that one. So now I'm figuring I had been in the feds before, obviously, but it changes. Um, I get sent to Allenwood Low. All right. So I, I'm like, damn, I'm going to a low. This is going to be sweet. Now, I'm not the one that politickers or anything anyway. But I was just like, I'm definitely not on that. I'm doing three and a half years. I, 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 don't, I don't want none of this other shit. I don't want to get in trouble with none of this shit. So I get there. Now, when I get there, you know how they like when you first get there, you're they're, they're you know, interviewing you. You know what I mean? Like, are any gangs or, you know, yeah, all yeah. that type of shit. So this, this lady, she's interviewing me, right? So she's like, uh, she asked me, she's like, what do, what do you identify as? I was like, oh, nothing. You know what I mean? So she's like, no, what do you identify as? I said, nothing. She's like, no, what do you identify as? I said, I said, I, said, I, I know I look like it and all my tattoos. I said, oh, trust me, I've never been in a gang in my life. She's like, no, what do you identify as? A male or a female? I said, well, so I, I'm like, holy shit. Things have changed. <laughs> So I'm like, well, I'm, I asked her, I was like, what's wrong with you? I'm a dude. You can't tell that? This is man's prison or whatever. So she just gave me this mean look. That is what started, started a spiral. So I get there and um, I get on, you know, they put me on whatever unit or whatever. And it was so crazy. Like, they now have their own commissary. They, they got a commissary just for like trans, transgender people. Yeah. Yes. You're allowed to buy sports bras. But you're not allowed to buy wife beaters. Right. You know? And what a wife beater is for your audience is just like, you know, tank top. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, we can't buy that, but they can buy sports bras. So it was like really, really messed up. So this was out of the world. Like, I've never seen nothing like this. So I walk in the chow hall. Now, they got a section in the chow hall where all the transgenders sit. And, you know, everybody gives them nicknames and shit. There was this old white man. They called her Mark's book for her. They called it him, whatever they want me to call yeah. whatever. I want to say nothing about the way. They called the guy, Martha Stewart, 
you know what I mean? They get Jennifer Lopez is the Spanish one. Yes. This that. They had a. Okay. They had like Ty, uh, Tyler Swift, <laughs> and you know, they had all these names. They they were. I can't. I wish I used to know. Like there, I like five. I knew like five of them. They were, you know, who knew the names. They were hilarious. God, yes. was. Uh, um, one was something like uh, Michael Minaj. Um, like I mean, they had just a ton of. They were hilarious too. Yes. It's crazy. And then they, so I get there. So this is like, a, now I've seen them, uh, that's kind of stuff in, in the FCIs and all before too. Like they, like they give them their hormone shots and all that stuff. Yeah. But don't, don't you have like a real disability and need a Tylenol three. They won't give that to you, but you can go get a hormone shot and grow breasts. Yeah. You know? So anyway, it's good for them. So I, um, <laughs> so I get there. So this, this, this place is just like, it's something I've never seen. So now, like I told you, man, I sit down, I don't want nothing to do with all these politics or nothing. But like I said, you get the wannabes. These guys are in low security. Like, dude, you're not, you've never busted the great, you know, because this, listen, all these guys, like you got these guys like the, um, on this, on, on social media, the West Watsons and all these guys, they did all this shit, right? They did all this shit, but they kept them in these mediums and stuff like that. Let me explain something to you. Uh, and I'm not no badass. I'm not a tough guy. And I'm, my first state, that state prison uh, sentence that I got, mm-hmm. I started a pre-release. I wound up in a medium. Okay. My federal sentence. I started an FCI. I wound up in a penitentiary. Um, this last one at the low, I didn't last there 26 days. And look, I'm not even like that. I'm not oh, paperwork. And, oh, I got to right. pay for my ass. I'm like, that's goofball stuff. So anyway, it was like one of them type of guys. Right. So I, I go and uh, I sit down at the table and I eat. So it was like a, uh, like salad or, you know, was on the tray or whatever. So this guy asked me, he's like, uh, are you good, man? I'm figuring he's offering me salad dressing or something. Right. I, I'm like, nah. I said, yeah, yeah, dude, I'm cool. Thanks a lot. He's like, no, I mean, are you good? I said, excuse me? He's like, are you good? Your paperwork? I said, now I looked at him and he's got a lanyard around his neck, like a thing around his neck that says RDAP. Right. I said, excuse me? I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I said, check this out. I said, who do you think I am? I said, first off, you got a, a, you're in the RDAP program. Okay. Now I'm not saying people in RDAP are snitches or whatever, because I had co-defendants doing all, but it is, is you have to snitch in that program. Yeah. You definitely have to tell yeah. people on that shit. Yeah, you, know, you're you have to, to get- hold them accountable. Yes. <laughs> which which I just want to make a point on this. Okay, so you're telling me that they can do that for the year off and it's fine. But if me and you robbed the bank out here and I said, Matt, tell them me. I'll tell on you, we won't get 20 years, we'll get 10. We'd be rats. Right. You know what I mean? Come on, man. This is all hypocrisy. So, like, I told him, I said, I said, you're a hard dad. I said, check this out. I said, I've been in penitentiary. I've been in. I said, I ain't even for all this shit. I said, now, what's up? I said, yeah, I'm good. I said, are you good? I, he's like, it's, oh, no, no, dude, man, dude, dude, dude. So, then I told him, I guess, I said, now, look. I said, look, I said, I'll beat the shit out of you. I said, I'll wake you up if we fight. I said, I know that for a fact. I said, now, let me say something. I said, what if, what if you just said, am I good? And I told you, no, I, I testified against 100 people. I said, what would you have done? Uh, 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 nothing. He'd have just run around exactly. and told everybody. That's all he would have done. He right. would have told everybody. He's no well, good. He's no good. Right. You know what I mean? But like, that's what, so I get it. So this is why I wouldn't land there. So there was some, look, this is how they did me. They did me dirty, man. The staff hated me there. So, so um, I'm on the phone with my girlfriend. Now, I'm talking to her, and I called the counselor. It's the counselor was doing something. Was something. I said, yeah, the counselor's stupid ass bitch. You know what I mean? This, this was the conversation between me and my girl. Mm. They call me lieutenant's office three days later. They give me a, they give me a shot for it. So I'm like, insolence towards staff. I didn't say nothing to her. You right. know what I mean? So we have the UDC hearing. So when we had the UDC hearing, she's in there. Some other cops are in there. I guess they didn't like that. I acted either. They took my phone for a year for that. Took my phone privilege for a year. So now I do know this because I have been in trouble. You know what I mean? In the joint, you know, when they take your phone privilege, they actually, the sanction don't kick in until 12 o'clock that night. So obviously the first thing I do, Matt, is I go and call my girlfriend and she's upset, man. I'm like, I'm like, babe, I said, she was coming every week. To she was good girl. So I'm like, I'm like, um, I'm like, babe, listen, I lost my phone for a year. You know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. You know, I'll just have to email you, whatever. So she's all upset and everything. So, okay. Two days later. Another shot. I get called. 
Yes. You knew you they lost your phone. Email. They take my email for a year. Oh. Now you're cutting off everything. You're trying to cut me off now. The only thing I got left is my visits. So my girl will come up and visit me like uh, every week, every other week. You know, uh, Alan Wood's probably three hours away. So she told me when she comes up, this dude, this, this, this CO asked her, he looked like Elmer Fudd. You know what I mean? He's like, why are you? I don't know why you're visiting that asshole. You know what I mean? Like, dude, we're like, be a little bit professional. You know what I mean? This is, this is people, this is my people you're talking to. So she tells me about it. Now he would be in the visit room and okay. They would harass me so bad that when we're sitting there, we go ahead. Uh, you know, when she comes to the visit room, she's in front of me, whatever. I was just holding her hand. Now there was a gay couple right here. They're all, they're kissing and everything. They run right over. You can't touch nobody. I'll, they they pulled me in a room. And uh, uh, it's the Elmer Fudd guy. He pulls me in the room and said, I'll take your visas. I said, what? He's like, and I heard what you said about me. You said, I, I'm Elmer Fudd. You think you're so smart and cool. So they're listening to my conversations and shit. So, okay. So now they do the email thing to take that. Now. You have three men in a cube at uh, the Lowe's, okay? So I'm in there with this old Russian guy, Z, and this uh, Spanish guy. This dude, he just moves in on his own. You know what I mean? So now I lose my bottom bunk. I got to get on the top bunk, all shit. So I'm already pissed about that. So now this guy was some type of weirdo, dude. He said, so he's sitting there. He's harassing somebody on the street. So they call the prison. And they're like, you know, this guy's harassing me. So they write him up, give him a shot. So now he comes to the cube. He's like, we're all in there talking. He's like, um, hey, yeah, man, they gave me a shot or whatever. Like, it's cool or something. So the one dude makes a joke. It's like, yeah, it's probably because you're in here with E. You know they hate E. So I seen the look on his face. I said, whoa, 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 whoa. I said, don't make no jokes like that. I said, please don't make no jokes like that. I said, look, what he's, the staff hates me, obviously. But somebody on the street hates him. You know what I mean? This right. is total opposite. I said, I got nothing to do with this. It's not because he's living with me or whatever. So eventually the guy goes for his shot. Okay, he goes to UDC. That's what you go to for them, like 300 series shots. You don't go to DHO. So when he goes there, I guess they took his phone privilege for like six months or something. Or like not even that, three months probably. I don't know what it was, but it wound up being nothing. He starts fucking freaking out and he starts yelling to the counselor in Spanish. He runs in with the counselor. All of a sudden, he leaves the counselor's office. Now he's got no sanctions or nothing like that. Well, the next day, I'm at work at REC. And they, I was selling drugs in there a little bit. I was, you know what I mean? I'd get my hands. It, it's not even really drugs anymore. It's like some boxing and shit. Like, that's not even really drugs, you know? It's right. a camera. You know, so I'm selling that or whatever. So he told me, I guess, for that. So I'm at REC. And that's, that was my job. I'm just sitting there. They called me in the office. And you would think, like, this is, like, the biggest bust in the world. They're like, don't move. I'm like, what the fuck? So they strip me naked in the, in the, in the um, rec office. Then they take me to lieutenant's office. And I was around at that time. I was around. I was doing a little bit of drugs and shit like that, too, myself. So I was dirty. So they stripped me naked or whatever, and they hand me a cup. So I burnt the cup up. You know what I mean? So I, I got it. It comes up dirty. Right. So now... But they have to send it out. They have to send the cup out because them tests, like I've actually not been doing drugs and fucking took the piss test and it came up dirty and I was actually clean, you know. So they can't lock you up because them tests are faulty. So they got to wait for the lab to test it. So that's what they do. If you come up dirty, they send it to the lab and they, they do the actual test, which I know that it's going to come back dirty, you know. But you got all these people, you know, like, oh, yeah. so I got like eight days. So I don't know who told me at this point. So it comes out, you know how prison is, you know, somebody went right into the counselor's office after he had left out and my face was on the computer screen and shit like that. So the situation was, was I think I would like, um, I probably would like 50 bucks to like store men and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like I go to store men and get sodas, honey buns, shit like that. Shit I didn't buy off commissary or whatever. So I don't want to sit here and do nothing and get locked up and make it look like I'm ducking out. You know what I mean? Some shit like that. Because you know how these people are in prison. Yes. Oh, he fucking did that because he owes 50 bucks. Like, Come on, dude. I wipe my ass for 50 bucks. So, at the end of the day, I'm sitting here. So, I'm telling somebody, when I hear about this, I was like, yeah. So, I'm going to kick his ass. You know what I mean? He's getting an ass kicking. 
wasn't going to stab. I'm not going to stab people on type of shit. But I was pissed off. I already know. And I don't give. I want to get thrown out of here anyway. You know what I mean? So now I'm coming out of the cubicle one day. And I guess it got to him within this time frame beforehand. So I got my coat on. You know how you got them big dumb coats or whatever? Because it's wintertime. So I got that on. Who fights in that, really? Like, who's going to go put on a coat to fight? So as I'm walking up the court, you know, the hallway or whatever, getting ready for lunch, he's standing out there with, like, five people. So he's like, um, was he, uh, he says, hey, what are you running around calling me? I said, mom, I called you a bitch. And I called you a rat. You told me, you know what I mean? So he's like, well, what do you want to? Next thing you know, I have three piece. Bing, bing, bing. He's falling everywhere. This guy can't fight. I look, but dude, I'm old now. Like, in my younger days, man, I would, I would, you know, stomp him and all that shit. But I'm just like, I looked at the guy. I'm just like, man. He's like, please. I was like, look, I ain't done doing this. Just get up, get out of here. You know what I mean? Fuck us up. I go ahead. I go to chow. So I'm sitting in the chow. You know how how it is in prison. How every rumor gets around and all that type of shit. Right. Well, my buddy comes up to me and he's like. I'm sitting there eating my chicken sandwich. He's like, yeah, E, they were fighting on our block or whatever. I said, oh, really? He's like, yeah. So then I'm like, okay, cool. So he leaves. He comes back. E, they said it was you. I said, yeah. I said, it was. He said, why are you so calm? I said, dude, it wasn't even really a fight. It's no big deal. It's like, you know, who cares? I said, I'm going to get locked up for it, you know? So I go. Now, I go to, I go to work, which was wrecked. Okay, so I, I got to go to work because in a low, if you don't even show up for work, they'll give you a shot and right. lock you up. So I got to go. I, I, I leave Chow. I go to rec. So I'm sitting in rec. Boss, report to the lieutenant's office. So we know what this is. So I'm telling everybody, okay, guys, you know, everyone throw me out of jail. I'll see you guys later. Nice meeting you, whatever. Make sure my shit gets packed or whatever, which they didn't. Somebody stole my Timberlands. But <laughs> good guys. Yeah, These are the good I dudes. The good dudes. So. Anyway, so I um, I walk to the lieutenant's office now as I'm walking up there. Guess what I see sitting there? I see my other celly, the old Russian guy, Z. I'm like, Z, what's up? He's like, I don't know. E. He's like, they said, man, you were fighting. I said, what? So I'm like, shit, we're going to get around this one. Because that guy didn't want to get locked up either. The guy I beat up. Right. Because, you know, he's scared to go to the shoe and all that shit. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get out of this one. So I walk in there, I'm like, look, dude, me and this guy are friends. We weren't fighting. I don't know. These guys are lying to you or whatever. So Lieutenant, you know, they take off your shirt, check your hands. I'm like, not nothing. He's like, yeah, this is some bullshit. He's like, you guys going back. It's over with. Now, I don't go back to the unit, obviously, because I got to go to work. So I go back to rec. So four o'clock recall. I come back to the unit. I walk in the unit. Everybody, all these guys look at me. They turn, the white guys, the good white guys. Right. The tough ones, the good ones, they all look at me like they seen a ghost. Like, What's up, man? I said, no, nah, man, you know, why? You know, and so I go in there. The guy's still in, in my cube. <laughs> you know, the guy that I beat up still in my cube. He's in there with a hat on and shit. <laughs> so I'm just like, look, man, it's over. He's like, it's, I see it's over with, man. It's man, whatever. Who cares, you know? Nah. So after the account, you're allowed to come out and use the computers and shit like that. These good guys, solid stand-up guys, it was 14 of them. They all went to the computer and sent messages to SIS. They were calling SIS dummies and shit. They were like, you dummies need to check the camera and stuff. You did it right. Now. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they checked the cameras or whatever, and then they, they wound up locking him up. They called him first. Then they called me and locked me up. So then I got, um, so they sent me out there. Now they transferred me to the medium. Now COVID hits. So this is when COVID hits while I'm in the shoe. So I was probably in the shoe probably like 60 some, 70 some days or something before I get to the medium. Now, when I get to the medium, it's a bunch of fake there too. This is where I told you, like when you said about the fake paperwork, Yeah. they had this guy there. They call this little white guy named the Monopoly Man. He looked like the Monopoly Man. Right. He's supposed to be doing law work and all that stuff. He's changing motherfuckers' paperwork. You know what I mean? It's because he had a lot of people like... He was on a computer for testifying on people or whatever, but nobody do nothing to him, all this type of shit, because these people are backing him up because he's doing their law work. No, he's, he's changed their paperwork. Right. You know what I mean? So that's what he was known for and shit like that. So it was just a, it was a lot of fake shit over there. Like some dude came up to me when I was in the mediums, like, you want to, you know, you know, I'm the guy who checks paperwork and all around here. I said, well, let me ask you a question. Where are you from? Utah. Uh, Utah. He's like, I was like, what are you in here for? Him and his brother robbed a 7-Eleven, and he's in the feds because of the gun. I'm like, dude, listen, 
no, nah, you can't. You the, you're a crackhead. You know what I'm saying? You're not chicken. Who the fuck are you? Anyway, this same guy who's doing all this kind of stuff, he winds up getting caught uh, having sex with another guy. Mm. And they get caught. They get caught and they, they lock them up. So, like I said, it was during COVID. So the place is basically locked down. You come out like an hour a day or whatever. Once again, I used my brains uh, and, and got around some shit because now the phones are hell. It's going to be hell. Like, and I lost my phone. I lost my phone. But, you know, there's always a guy that you could pay. And yeah. Use their phone and shit. So look, during COVID, they, they put you up to 500 minutes a month and the phone calls were free. Okay. The phone calls were free. Okay. So next thing you know, so imagine that. You got all these scumbag. I should call them. But you got all these guys been locked up here. They're coming out with their own little brown phone books that are all tattered and shit. They're calling people because it don't cost money now. So they get to bothering people, you know what I mean? That don't cut them off and shit. You know, so they're, you know, free phone calls. They think it's so great. I'm like, this sucks. So you got one, I believe it was like four phones, if I'm not mistaken. So some genius shot caller from whatever he is, blood strips, I don't know what he is, whatever. He's, he makes up how the rule's going to be. Well, this phone right here is going to be everybody from PA and all this kind of stuff. This phone right here is going to be New York. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. This phone right here is going to be like the D.C. and, you know, uh, mid-Atlantic areas so like D.C., Baltimore, Virginia, and some other shit. You know what I mean? And this phone right here is for the whites and the Spanish, right? So I'm like, okay, um, I go to get a, I go, I'm, I'm like, I know what phone I'm using. Because a lot of the white guys, like, people don't understand this. Look, look, one thing about it is, if you've been in prison, a lot of white guys, their families cut them off. Their people yeah. cut them off. Because a lot of them, and here's the truth of why, because a lot of them were pieces of shit. You know what I mean? It's not like this. Like, that's how I look at some of these, these uh, a lot of them guys, like, who were on here talking shit and all that kind of stuff. Like, these white guys never did shit in the street. They just, you know, I mean, they did, they did some goofy shit. You know, what I mean, they were on drugs and they robbed their their mothers. They robbed people. You know, what I mean, like I'm not talking about committing commit fraud. Shit. I mean, I like, actually physically did did stuff shit. So like they're nobodies. So what do you think? People won't send them anything in jail or do anything for them? No. And and look, you know, I'm stating the truth because you've seen it. Like out of every other race, you know, what I mean, the white guys are the ones who really actually get cut off. You know what I mean? Like they don't have nobody doing shit, so they don't use the phone as much. You know, and that you didn't have that many Spanish guys. So I'm like, shit. So I go to hop on a phone. Dude, dude, this dude, I, I forget where he's from. Where does he go? You from, you from, uh, you the DC DMV. I said, man, I was, I'm white. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? I said, I'm using this white phone. Dude, so it was only like four of us to use that phone. You know what I mean? And you're only out an hour a day. Uh, or I think it was 45 minutes in the daytime, 45 minutes at night. So it's sucked. Uh, for um, them people, I've seen them people fighting over it and all that shit. So then you get, you know, when you get to these places, you get like these rah-rah guys, you know, scumbags. So I, I, I got a herniated disc in my neck. So I, would, I actually signed up to go to pill line, which I never did before. And um, I did that so I could get out like an extra half an hour, you know, walk down the pill line all because it's locked down. So I'm going down the pill line one day. And so I see all the, and you know, these, these stand up white guys, they always got the compound jobs. They're right up under the police. If you ever notice, they get to do whatever the fuck they want. So there was a group of them and they would like hang out all day around the pill line, all that shit. So I'm walking down there and I run into this kid Brock that I knew from Scoop Hill. Now I knew this kid from Boston. I knew him when he was a kid, you know what I mean? And he came in. So he knew me. So he sees me, he's like, oh, what's up? I'm like, hey, Brock, what's up, man? So we, you know, damn, what's up? And all that shit. So as I'm going back through the gate, this little troll look at me, like, limping around and shit. He's like, is he good? Some hillbilly. I'm like, I hear it. I can't get back through the gate because, you know, the, you know where you walk through, like, where the COs are, are, you know, in the middle of the compound. So I can't get back through. So I hear Brock like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, he's good. Are you sure? So I'm like, okay, I'm going to show these, right? So the next day, I come walking down to the pill line by myself. So I walk right up on him. You know what I mean? Now he's got his back turned. I smack him. Bam. I hit him in his back. He turns around. I'm like, what's up? He's like, what's up? I'm like, yo, you tell me what's up. I said, you're asking around if I'm good or something. He's like, now nah, he's got a million excuses. No, there was somebody who came on it. I said, look, 
I said, here's how we're going to do this, man. I said, check this out. I said, um, let me ask you this first. Where are you from? New Mexico. I asked the other guy, where are you from? Texas. The other guy from some off the wall place. I said, listen. I said, this is my backyard. I said, now, what are you guys doing here? Oh, disciplinary. They're lying. They're lying. They're hiding. Right. You know what I mean? They don't do that. The only person who can ever give you disciplinary transfer is DHO. I think I would know. You know what I mean? Right. Because I've never even got one. Like, like even when I got sent to Big Sandy, that's because they raised my points. That wasn't disciplinary. They just, and they send you in your, in your region. There's only reasons they're going to send you out of your region. Okay, they're going to send you out of your region if you got too much influence in your region. They will do that. But then they're going to send you to a penitentiary, not an FCI. Or if you're hiding from a bunch of people in your area, you know, because the BOP is small. So I know what type of time them guys are on. So I was just like, man, and I was already pissed off. I was like, man, I, I felt like just, you know. But then then they're all, you know, running around. Yeah, 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 Biggie and all that shit. I don't, I don't mess with them dudes, man. But it's just like a lot of them. And you know what? A lot of them, they're just like, just be yourself. You know what I mean? You don't have to do that shit. You know, because you run into the wrong person. But then as I'm there, that was just a, Allen was a weird place, man. It was, it was a really weird place. But the, the feds, like I said, has changed, you know, since I got out. Now, since I got out of that, that was, I got out New Year's Eve of 22. That's when I was released. Okay. From that little three and a half years. Okay. So since that, you know, I've been doing my real estate stuff and all, but now back in August, here's what happens. Of course, I swear to God, it's always the people you try to help. So I do a lot of, um, I'll contract out jobs. You know, I got a buddy who's got an MHIC license and stuff like that. And, you know, he's, he's a good friend. And so I do a lot of like, like I sometimes go do the work, but I go down, like say, say a job's 50 grand or something like that, you know what I mean? It's $50,000 to remodel or whatever, you know, I'll put everything together. You know, I'll call up a concrete guy. I'll do all that kind of stuff. I'm pretty good at selling the jobs myself. You know what I mean? I'll show up and I'll, you know I mean? If, if somebody's just getting their house painted or whatever, I'll walk, I'll walk back out on, in on their, um, you know, say they got like a little deck, brick deck or whatever, you know, like patio type thing. I'll say, oh, yeah, ma'am, you know, you might want to get that done. You see the crack in there and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, I've been uh, doing that like. Upsell them? Yes, yes, upsell them. I learned that from carpet cleaning, like with Scotch Guard and stuff. Right. Like, you know, Scotch Guard, come on. I, I've put water in that thing before, you know what I mean? Because I didn't, I didn't have Scotch Guard. But um, I was, I, actually, I was one of the first people who did the air duct shit. The cleaning the air ducts. Right. I did it down there when I was, when I was on the run down there. For this place called AmeriClean, man. Fuck, dude, I didn't know nothing. I fell through somebody's roof. I mean, through their ceiling and fell through their dining room table, right? Because look, we're supposed to be... Now, I don't know how it is now, but back then, our truck said NAT could satisfy, uh, certified National Air Duck Association, NATAS, or some shit like that. I'm not certified. I'm actually on the run. So I start working. Now, I'm doing good, upselling the jobs and stuff like that. Here's what happens. So we do, we also do dryer vents, you know, clean the dryer vents. Now you usually go on the roof and push the thing down and all that kind of stuff. I at least know how to do that. Well, I'll go to this home down in, um, probably around like coconut road or something like that. Nice home. So they wanted their, um, air ducts done and they also wanted a dryer vent. I think I'm, I'm so stupid. I probably sold them on the dryer vent. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Charge them a hundred bucks. I just climb up there and push so they, they go for it. So I'm like, okay, let me get my ladder and stuff. I'm going to go up to do the dryer vent. They're like, no, 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 no. You go right here through the attic or whatever, right? Now, me being from, I thought an attic was this because I'm from Baltimore City. And growing up, I didn't even really understand, like, you know, every attic I've been in has just been like a hard floor, you know what I mean, where you can walk across the whole thing. Right. <laughs> I'm figuring the same thing. So they're like, no, here's the access to it. They pull it down. I go up the ladder. And it was right there in their kitchen, right? First fucking step I take, boom! I come crashing through their fucking, I come crashing through the uh, drywall, ceiling. the drywall. Yeah, hit the thing. Yes, yes. So I fall down. They're like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm all this around. Like, yeah. So I'm like, I don't know what the fuck to say. They're like, did you miss the beam? I'm like, yes, I missed the beam. I did, you know what I mean? So I didn't know you had to walk on these beams and shit. I just thought, you know. 
<laughs> I fell right through that. I remember I'd go into places, man. I'd hate to say this shit, but like, I'd go in there and I'd be like, um, <laughs> it might be like an old, old ass lady or something. And listen, I just want to say I've changed. You know what I mean? Like, I've never hurt nobody. I'm like, I just want to say I've changed. I've done shit like this, right? So it's only like, you know, the coupon will say like 29 bucks to clean 10 air ducts. I'm like, who the fuck wants to do that? So I went in and um, I would go in and I go in the air duct. And you know how like, if you reach back a little back a bit, it's like that little insulation that'll get on you and it's like real itchy yeah. and shit or the yellow shit. I'd take a piece of that off. So then I walk up and I'd be like, man, and I could tell, you know, she's old and fat and stuff. I'd be like, Have you been having problems breathing? <laughs> She'd be like, yes. Like, oh, that's why I throw it at her. This is all through your vents and all. She's like, oh my God, what can I do? Well, from, um, I'll, I'll do a 30 bucks a vent. I can seal that off. You know what I mean? You won't have these problems no more. You know, I've done shit like that. Um, I remember one time, dude, I was uh, caught a house on fire because um, we would advertise the, to clean your blower, your central air conditioner blower or whatever. Right. I'm not, uh, I'm not like a mechanical guy. You know what I mean? So... I had gotten away with every time somebody had gotten that, I would just, they wouldn't watch me and shit. So I'll fucking just go take like a toothbrush, make sure the power's turning off or whatever. And I'll just reach in there clean, you know? I, yeah, I did it. You know what I mean? Like you'll see on like inside edition, like right. that type of shit. So one time I get this, I get this chick, right? <laughs> so I go down there and um, she wants me to actually do this. She's watching me. So I have to take this whole blower out, right? I was so proud of myself, man, because I actually got it out pretty easy and all. So I'll go ahead and I open it up. You know what I mean? I'm not even going to have no problems. I clean the hell out of this motherfucker right in front of you. Yeah, that's an awesome job or whatever. I go ahead. I put it back in. I guess I put the red wire where the blue wire is supposed to be or something like that. So like, all right. I, I say, all right, all right, all right, ma'am. Go ahead. Crank it up. <laughs> she hit that power. That motherfucker. Boom. Like, you know what I mean? Fucking fire everywhere and shit. <laughs> Dude, look. I had a... um. I, I look. I was in um, Boca, Boca Raton. Mm -hmm. I was working for the steamer at Boca Raton. So my manager was—he was just a regular dude too. This one manager, he was cool. Like none of us are certified, knew none of that shit. So we get this lady, right? This Jewish lady, rich lady. So she calls, and she wants to get an area rug cleaned. Okay, so area rug and a sofa. So that's my first job of the day. So me, I'm the crew chief. So this guy Gary, he's older than me. He's my helper. So we, we get all high. We smoke some weed and shit. So shit. So, you know what I mean? So we're, you know, we're all fucking stoned. So I get to this house. So you go up to this house, big, beautiful house. So I ring the doorbell. I hear the lady, come on in. So I walk through the house. Now I'm fucking walking. I'm just trying to hear her voice where she's at. So I finally get to this room. It's her. She's laying there on the sofa. Now, when she's laying there on the sofa, I was like, yes, man. I said, see, you you want a sofa clean today in an area rug? So she's like, yeah. I said, okay. Um, what sofa? You know what I mean? She's like, this one. So she's on the sofa. So I'm like, well, you're gonna have to, you know, get off the sofa or whatever. So she's like, for that, that's the area rug. I want you to tell me what kind of rug that is. So I look down. I'm like, Gary, tell what kind of rug it is. <laughs> he looks at me. He's like, dude, you're the crew chief. Right. So, I'm like, so I look, and I'm like, um, it's brown. You know, it's a brown area rug. It's very nice. I, I reach out and touch it. I guess it's a very nice area rug. What kind of rug is it? I'm like, uh, you know, she's like, get the hell out. Get the hell out. So she throws us out. So now my manager. Base of 55, I guess that was my sharp number, whatever, I think at the time. Give me a call on a, on a private line. I'm like, oh, shit. So it's Dave. So he's like, what the just happened at this house and all this kind of stuff? He's giving me, he's giving me the third degree. I said, you know what, Dave? And he's this type of guy. I could get him. I said, I said, you know what, Dave? I said, all this. I said, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come get you. I said, we're going to come out here. I said, I'm going to give you $1,000 if you can tell me or her what kind of rug that is. Since you're so smart, mm -hmm. he's like this. Just go to your next job, Eric. You know what I mean? Because he didn't know either. You right. know, I, I did. Um, I got this one time. This kid ratted me out because it was a Saturday, man. It was a Saturday, so you know you want to. You, you, I'm in South Florida. You want to get off early. You know what I mean? 
So it's you know, you take a light day on that. So I go to this house and it's like it was a nice job. Dude. It was like it was like four bedrooms, four bedrooms I did, you know, living room, dining room. It was, a, it was probably like a like a four hundred, five hundred dollar job or whatever, you know, which I'm getting at the time I'm getting like sixteen percent of that. And this is in nineteen ninety six, nineteen ninety seven, so it was good money, you know. So I want to upsell it. So I do everything. So uh, we did a good job. I always do a good job. So I, I, the lady was cool. She's like, she wants everything Scotch guarded. Now, Scotch guard is 80% of the cleaning price. And all you got to do is spray some shit on there, you know? So I'm like, awesome. I have sold on a Scotch guard. Now, this is, we're, we're, we're closing on almost a thousand dollar job. That's pretty good for fucking two hours, you know what I mean? It's going to take. So get this shit done and all. So I send the kid out to the bank. I was like, oh, go ahead. Go get the Scotch guard and shit, you know what I mean? Now, I ain't, he's my helper. He didn't fill up the Scotch guard that day. So we didn't have no Scotch guard. So he comes in. He's like, Eric, we got to go. We got to go back to the office and get a Scotch guard, you know, because I, I forgot to fill up the Scotch guard. So I'm like, okay, am I going to drive back to this office 45 minutes before? That's another hour and a half. They got it 45. So I said, I guess I said, um, I said, here's what I want you to do. He said, what? I said, you see that hose? He's like, yeah. I said, take that hose, go turn it on and fill the Scotch guard thing up with water. And then go spray water everywhere. <laughs> so he did it. You know what I mean? Like, so next thing you know, he went back to the office, ratted me out. So that, that next week, Dave calls me in the office. And he's like, he was ready to fire me. He's like, Eric, you did this with the Scotch guard, blah, 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 blah. You know, this and that, this and that. So I got out of that one list. I said, Dave, you know what that was? I said, look, what day was it? He's like, it was fucking Saturday. I said, exactly. I said, now imagine, Dave, by that, you were working on Saturday. You were the manager. Now, would you rather have me spray that water? You know what I mean? Which ain't going to make no difference anyway. I said, or would you rather me have to come all the way back here, get the Scotch guard, go back there, spray it, then come back here, and then you lock everything up? He's like, just get the out of my office and don't trust nobody. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's always, I've been involved in all that kind of shit. Like, but like, everything's an off sale. Everything's a con. You know what I mean? Right. But like, it's, that's a lot of stuff, stuff like, but like, since, like, since I've been out, I'll tell you what happened to me. So as we're talking about working, so I've actually, so I'm, I'm doing a lot of remodeling and stuff and I'm middleman a lot of it, you know, a lot of the work and stuff. So a lot of my, that's a cash business, really. A lot of my, my workers and stuff, I'll pay them in cash. And a lot of times these people got to feed their family. So truthfully, like we'll get paid a third of like somebody's going to get their, their place remodeled, get paid a third. Then a third, then a third. Then, you know, you pay everybody and all that kind of stuff. Well, you know, I always try to pay my people, you know, if they need it or whatever. So, I was, you know, I've been known to have a lot of cash on me. Let's just say it that way. So, this is back in, um, it happened June 30th. I'm helping this person out. I used to date this girl, right? And I'm helping her out. And she, listen, this is how much I'm helping her out. She's down on nothing. She's losing her house. Her car's impounded. Her BGE is cut off, and her hot water heater blows up. She has no hot water heater. I get her a hot water heater, pay $1,000, get somebody to install it. You know what I mean? That same day it blew up. Her BGE goes out. I pay $1,000 for that. Her uh, car was impounded. She couldn't get the money to get it out. I pay $1,000 for that. Then I give her like 700 bucks for her kid's birthday. Now, I told you, I used to date her back in the day when she was hot. You know what I mean? And she's, a, you know, she's up there in age and stuff. Like, yeah, she ain't hot no more, you know? So I'm talking, yeah, I'm messing with some other chicks and stuff like that. But I guess she just, you know, she feels a certain type of way. And she got mad because, you know, she had the nerve to ask me after I do all this. She says, hey, Eric, can you give me like a, a like $900 for Botox? I said, Botox? I said, you're lucky you got water. You know right. what I mean? I said, you need to start, you know, you need to wake up, you know? So anyway, I had a bunch of cash that um, I was actually paying because we did we did these two big jobs. You know, we did a fifty thousand dollar job, and I think like a forty thousand dollar job, and then and then plus all the other little job stuff. There's a lot of cash accumulated. So I show up at her house, and I go upstairs because I was in that neighborhood, and I, I go upstairs and I was doing something. I was relaxing before I went out or something, and um, I put the money in her basement. And, you know, it was, it was a decent amount of money, you know, it's like 60. So this crazy chick, she, I guess, goes down there, steals, I guess she's on drugs or whatever. She steals the money. She steals the money, goes and puts it in a storage 
And now she left her kid there with me and everything. Like, I, you know, but I didn't do nothing. I'm just like, I, I come downstairs. It wasn't even 10 minutes. I see I'm, I'm getting the money. This ain't even my money. I got to pay this out to people and everything. So this is all from jobs. You know what I mean? That's been accumulated. A lot of this money's got to go in the bank and shit like that too. <laughs> so I'm like, I know what she did. So I wait for her. She comes back. I'm like, look, I said, give me that money back. You know what I mean? So she's all spaced out and whatever. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, she blames her other son. She's like, Greg probably stole it on Dominic's birthday. I said, Dominic's birthday was on the 28th. I said, Greg and them haven't been here. I said, I just put this money in here today. I said, and you, there's been nobody. You stole the money. Just go get it. I said, I got to take care of all this shit. So she's sitting there. She's like, yeah, that is. So I was like, okay, maybe when she comes down off whatever bin she's on, you know what I mean? I get the money back. So like two, three days or whatever, go to fuck by. And she's sitting here. She's like, um, she still won't come up off the money. So now like I put a tracker on her car and everything, you know what I mean? Cause I'm not letting her get away with my money. So just so happened, I had a buddy come in from out of town and he rents this hotel room and it's called the comfort Inn. It's like a CD hotel. It's some bullshit. Yeah. So he don't like it or whatever there. So he, he paid for it for like two weeks or whatever. So he leaves. So I was like, uh, he let me have that hotel room or whatever. So I was with another chick. Just so happens, I swear to God, I had nothing to do with the tracker or nothing. This girl that stole my money, I guess she's trying to not be at her house or whatever. She comes to this same hotel and checks in. Checks in the same hotel I'm just at with another girl, right? Just, just the luck of it. I come down in the lobby. I see her with a tanning bag. Dang. I see her with a tanning bag, all bulged out. On, I know what that. I know what looks in that tanning bag on her shoulder. That's my dough. You know what I mean? So I, we're in the lobby. I snatch it. Boom. So I snatch it. I'm trying to get out of there. So as I'm trying to get out of there, you know, I'm not beating nobody up or nothing. I got what I, however much of my money I got back. I'm trying to leave. So as I'm trying to get out of there, I got my truck up on the uh, parked over here. The girl I'm with, she's got her car over here. So I don't even know nothing about the girl. You, you know, they ripped my shirt off. The one chick tried to get me. She's ripped my shirt off. So I'll just shake off that. So I'm headed up the wall. Now, I don't even see. I'm not paying attention to what's going on behind me. Now, the girl that I'm with, she's like five foot two, probably 115 pounds. You know what I mean? She's a breast cancer survivor and everything. I turn around. They're kicking her ass. Her and her son are beating the hell out of this girl. So obviously, I got to turn back around. You know what I mean? So I turn around. I think I might have just like kicked her real quick. I ain't hard. Just kicked her off the girl. And then I I, I got a bag. It's 50 some grand. You know what I mean? No. I got a bag. So I just hit the kid in, in his mouth. You know what I mean? So he fell back. Now he's a boxer. He's one of them kids. He's like 17 or whatever. But he's one of them kids that like, you know, they, they got him on social media, knocking kids out of right. school, beats up the principal. He's one of them. So anyway, so now I get back to where I'm going. I count the money. It's about seven grand light. So, okay, let's just call that a loss. Now, look, you can come over here right now and punch me in the mouth for $7,000. I'll let you do that all day long. Right. You know what I mean? That's, you know, keep it for what it is. This crazy person gets the police involved. The police show up, obviously, because it happened in the lobby of a hotel. So they get the police involved. So the first thing the police do, this, and this is the truth, the police don't need to do their due diligence. She sits here and tells the police that I robbed her for $50,000 cash at the Comfort Inn. Now, the police don't even say, where'd you get the money or nothing like that. She don't got a job. She ain't worked in years. Her car just got repoed. Her, she ain't paid her mortgage in years. So you're telling me you got 50 grand? And if you do got 50 grand, this isn't the Foxwood Casino. This isn't the MGM. This isn't Vegas. This is the Comfort Inn. <laughs> Who the hell has 50 grand with the Comfort Inn? Right. So anyways, but the cops don't care. So they put a warrant out on me. So I'm like, all right. So I call a lawyer, whatever he finds out, there's a warrant out on me for robbery of my own money. <clears throat> so I'm like this. I, so I tell the girl I was with, I was like, look, I was like, since they did that, if I got to fight them in court, you should go press charges on them for beating you up. You know what I mean? Because that's really the only assault that was there. If you said I assaulted anybody because I think it was robbery. And she even said over $50,000. She'd have been smarter saying I stole a watch or something. You know what I mean? It's more like, you know. So anyway... So I tell the girl to go press charges on that so that it would look better on me in court when I've got to face music. Now I'm going on the run. I'm not going to sit here and turn myself in or nothing. So the girl goes to press charges. Next thing you know, I she calls me. She's like, Eric, they're locking me up. I said, what? 
said, I said, what the for? Robbery. I said, they're locking you up for robbery. Are you crazy? They locked her up for every charge that I had. They locked her up for. So now, Matt, I'm sick. So I call up, um, I call up an attorney, where a good attorney. I meet him in a parking lot because I'm on a run. You know what I mean? I meet him in a parking lot, pay him. They gave her no bail, but then the next day they wound up giving her, they gave her a bail. So that was, so it took like a, about, I was probably chilling for like a month or something like that. Next thing you know, they show up at this place that I was staying at, this, um, this, this, this apartment, like, you know what I mean? It's like, it's in the suburbs and shit like that. Next thing you know, there's like, there's like, uh, 25 cops out there and all they're screaming, open the door. Open the door. Obviously I'm not opening the door. I'm just like, I'm chilling. It's, just sitting there, you know what I mean? So they're there for like two hours. They're beating on the windows and shit like that. So they go to the place and get a key and they come in. So that's why I was like surrendered to them. So I'm like, okay, this is obviously stupid. So I get, I, my lawyer's probably the best lawyer in Maryland. You know what I mean? So I, I hire him. So he gets down there to do my bail review or whatever. Man, they still kept me with no damn bail. They were like this. And, and, and my lawyer was brought up. He's like, listen, your honor, first off, this person who's pressing these charges is saying they have $50,000 cash. Their lifestyle doesn't fit that because they pulled her up on case search. Look, her house is in foreclosure. This is that. This is that. She can't even get a phone in her name. You know, I was helping her out. So the judge actually laughed. The judge was like, yeah, I don't believe she had 50000 but I'm still, I still think he's dangerous or whatever. Oh, because in the report, she said like this. She said um, she came to her house. I had my dog at her house. I've had my dog, child was sitting right there. I've had my dog for 10 years. You know what I mean? I've done, did a bid and had my dog taken care of by people, all that stuff. I, I love my dog. That's my dog. The state's attorney try to make it like I stole my own dog and all kind of bullshit. You know what I mean? Because of what they're believing, this, this weirdo. I'm like, first off, obviously, if, if she's got $50,000, there's been a bigger crime committed than me robbing her. Right. You know what I mean? Where'd that come from? What are you doing, 50 grand, your teenage son, and you're staying in a hotel that's two blocks from your house. Like, come on. You know, so they, they didn't give me no bail. So I eventually, um, eventually I wound up, uh, I wound up getting, uh, going to trial, you know what I mean? The trial date or whatever. My lawyer did do this. He got me a really fast court date because I would have still been sitting there, you know, because I was indicted or whatever. And it takes like a year to get to court, right. you know? but he got a really quick court date and they just dismissed the whole case when, when it got to court. And then the girl I was with or whatever, she she wound up getting her case dismissed. You know, the poor girl, you know what I mean? So that cost me a bunch of money. Like, I've had a, so many run-ins with these crazy cops around here. Like, um, I remember back in, in, like, some stuff's just, like, you got to pay attention to, like, when you're on the streets. Like, back when I was selling drugs and stuff, like, I had a few times, like, um, all right, I had one situation where I had this girl. She was holding, uh, she was holding shit for me, right? And I was screwing around with her, whatever, you know, you know, but she wasn't my girlfriend or nothing. She's messing with other dudes and all. Well, she gets mad that I'm out with this other chick. She gets all drunk. She's got her, all my drugs and shit in her car. And she's at Denny's. Like, you know, Denny's is a cop hangout. Right. And it's like two o'clock in the morning. Right. So she's at Denny's. I'm trashed. You know, she's calling me. And it, it was on phone tapping. All, you, you need to come get all your shit. Blah, blah. I said, Nicole, what are you doing? I was like, calm down, please, please. You know what I mean? But you know how women are when they get mad. Yeah. So I got to show up at Denny's. So it's me and my buddy. We show up there. Now I'm in my truck, my, my Escalade. So I, I coax her to come outside. I'm like, look, just come outside. Talk to me, please. So her car is right there. But I, there's a cop there. There's an actual physical cop there in uniform. I'm like, look. And she's making a big scene. Get that shit out of my car. I'm like, Jesus Christ. So look, here's what I do. I grab her. And I'm like, I don't beat women and all that kind of shit, but I grab her, I throw her in my truck real quick. You know what I mean? And I'm fucking like, Rick, shut the door. So I lock the door where so I fucking jump in the truck. I take off up the street because I don't want none of us to get in trouble. Sure enough, woo, 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 woo. I'm getting pulled over. Now, this was in that time frame after I had that accident. So I didn't even have a driver's license. You know, my license is suspended and everything. I'm shit-faced drunk too. So I, I'm getting pulled over. I'm like, so here's how I should have known the feds were. So the cop pulls me over. He comes up and he's like, he, I, I had a physical driver's license, but it was suspended. You know what I mean? Like when I say I had no driver's license and that paper license, they give you that would way past 45 days. So that's no good. So I handed my actual hard license or whatever. So next thing you know, I see the paddy wagon roll up. So, you know, if there's a cop and then a paddy wagon rolls up, you're going to jail. Yeah. 
So I jump on my phone. I call my bail bondsman. I'm like, hey, listen, check this out. I'm right here at Denny's in the, on Bel Air Road or whatever. Um, I'm going to get locked up. Paddy wagons here, everything like that. Just be ready to bail me out. He's like, okay. Just like I was under investigation. They gave me directions to a 50 Cent concert. The feds did. I was coming from um, I was coming from Ocean City. It was Fourth of July weekend, so we're down there partying and shit. And um, this is when Fifty Cent first came out, like two thousand three, when he first got his first album. He was like the, the the hottest thing going. So they had a rock the mic tour. So we wound up scoring some tickets for that. It was my little brother and my buddy. So I leave Ocean City. I come back to Baltimore, pick my little brother up, grab some more liquor. So I was always drunk. Dude. Like I, I stayed drunk. So I grab some more liquor or whatever. So now we're headed to uh, the concert, which is in Virginia. So on the way there, I get lost. Now, I remember back to, do you remember OnStar? Yeah. Okay. Well, look, if anybody's ever had OnStar, at least back in them days, if you would hit your OnStar, it would just be some chick would come on there. They don't know how to give you directions or nothing. You know, honestly, I used to hit it and talk to them at night and shit when I'm driving around, flirt with them and shit like that. And they would always give me bad directions. I make fun of them. So this day, this day, I was, I hit that, some guy came on. Now I should have been paying attention because I hadn't paid my one star bill in like two months, you know? So this guy comes on, he gave me, man, he gave me perfect directions. He knew everywhere I had to go and everything. I told him, he's so professional. I gave him a compliment, man, at the end of it. I said, sir, I said, let me just say something to you, man. I said, I, you know, I've used one star before. I said, but you are the, you are the best one star guy ever, man. You, you really are professional. So the irony of it is, like, I'm thinking he's the best one-star guy. He had to be thinking, yo, you're the dumbest criminal. You know what I mean? Right. He's, he, he wound up when the discovery came out. He was the age. You know what I mean? So there's been a lot of, like, like a lot of shit's, like, just been wild. You know what I mean? Wild and crazy type of stuff. You know, but I try to, you know, I actually start a YouTube channel now myself. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get it up and running. But this shit is, like, difficult. You know what I mean? Well, <laughs> why? Well, I, why? When did you start it? Um, probably like two weeks ago, you know, I, I, I got some, I just started learning how to edit and like put backgrounds and stuff behind me and stuff like that. But it's like, you got to get out to the, like, the, I don't know how to get out to all the viewers. And it, like, well, look, I started two weeks ago. I got like 80 subscribers. You know what I mean? So it's just like, well, yeah. When you do shows like this, you, you, you tell them about the, you know, tell them you got a podcast. Like people will go there and check it out. Oh, I can, I can say that on yeah, I mean, we'll put. I'll put a. I'll put a description. I'll put the description to your YouTube channel in the, the description. I'll put the link Thanks. to your YouTube channel in the description. And when I when I sign off, I'll say, "Hey, check out you know, oh, check okay. out your uh, Eric's you know YouTube channel." Oh, okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah. What do you have up right now? Huh? What do you have up? I got a. a um... I got some. I got like videos up of where I'm. I'm breaking down like certain stuff, like you know, prison stuff. I broke down like how uh, Trump's federal indictments. Um, doing like prison content, street content, stuff like that. Honestly, to be honest with you, what my goal is, and it's, it's crazy, it sounds crazy. Like everybody wants to hear all this gangster shit and all this bullshit. Dude, I was born into that type of life. I hate that shit. Like honestly, really what I want to do, I want to get into politics, honestly. You know, because right. I'm figuring like you got that guy um, in Pennsylvania, the guy who beat Dr. Oz, Fetterman. You know what I mean? Come on, dude. Yeah. Like, come on. Look, I mean, look at the president, Joe Biden. I mean, I think I'm right. I think I'm a little bit more, um, you know, more there than him. You know, we just yeah. had that, just like we just had that thing happen in um, the Francis Scott Key Bridge just the other day. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, uh, that's crazy, man. And um, the other day, I thought that was like yesterday. Was that yesterday? Yeah, two days ago. It was like one thirty in the morning, oh. a couple of days ago. It wasn't one thirty okay. the night before. Yeah, um, that's a shame, man. Six, I think six people, and you know what sucks is like the, the the it was the workers. You know what I mean? They were working construction. It was you know they were illegals or whatever. But I mean these people were just working and stuff. You know, like I I like to get into stuff like that. I like to get into like politics and, and things like that. Like on on just like really on a local level. You know, I've been trying to do like things like set things up. Like even like this last experience of just going to jail for that three and a half months, I noticed something. Now, when I was in there, I'm almost 50, you know, I'm 48 years old. So um, there was only about 10 of us on that whole tier that weren't from 18 to 25. You know, so I started looking at things and like they got all these programs like inside of there. 
for them to get their GED, for them to do this, for them to do this, for these kids to do this. But I was thinking like, you know, why not? Because they, they killed the bail system here. It's really no longer bail bonds or cash bail. So they just let out whoever they want. You know what I'm saying? So I was, you know, I, I want to get into something where so I, um, I maybe set up a center and set up a program where, you know, okay, release them, release them to a program where they have to be at my program three days a week. You know what I mean? They have uh, basically, basically a home training, you know, job training, GED, you know, um, just life skills. None of them had no confidence in their self. You know, just, just things like that. And, you know, so then when they go to court, they can say, hey, I've already accomplished all that. What's the point of putting me in jail? You know, but then right. they put these damn programs in jail. You know what I mean? So you know, I've been trying to do stuff like that and give them all that stuff. You know. But well, that, listen, I'm... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you ought to go check my channel out. I broke. Oh, I broke down Diddy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah I, I, yeah. I don't know anything about. Like, I I know just what uh, there was an article and what a couple of guys have said. Like, I don't, I don't know if everything has come out yet. Has it or? Well, wait, well, uh, well, here's the thing. If the feds come and the once the feds raid, you're getting indicted. It, it's over. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I told you, like when they. This last time, that was the state that did that. But, like, I remember that just did, 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 Eric, come on out. I could have flushed a body down the toilet. They didn't care. Yeah. They got the evidence. But, yeah, he's, he's done. You know what I mean? He's toast. Like, you hear people say, oh, money. And, Man, they print the money. What is wrong with you people? Like, do people pay attention? Like, do you, if, if you even look at it like, okay, then they're talking about it. You go somewhere with, with, with no extradition. They'll send somebody to kidnap you. Yeah. Yeah. They'll grab you. Yes. I, I knew how many people did you meet? I met plenty of people in, in the medium and the low where they were in their own country and the feds have no extradition. They, they just come kidnap you, put you on a plane. Your people don't say nothing like extradition. Isn't what people think it is. I seen a guy, listen, I seen a guy who had a life sentence because they sent him to go kidnap somebody. The feds did or whatever, like go on a mercenary type mission. And he right. got caught. He got caught in that other place or whatever. And he told him the feds here. Feds here right. came and got him, locked him up for some type of treason or something. Didn't want. Mm. Yeah, it was. You know, that was crazy. Oh, but like, yeah, it can go bad. Like I was telling people, like, all you got to do is look at, like, okay, you remember um nine eleven, okay. Uh, the UN, you know, they okay nine eleven was done by some by Laden then. Okay, what was Saddam Hussein's over in Iraq and all that stuff? So. The, the, UN, or the UN said that he didn't have weapons of mass destruction. You can't go get them. What did George Bush do? Hold my beer. Watch this. You know, went over right. there and got him. So you're telling me they go get to Saddam Hussein, kill him, decapitate him, then his kids or whatever. They hung him or whatever, built a McDonald's, took his gold toilet. But they're going to have problems with Diddy. Stop it. Right. He's going down. Where 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 is he? Um, He didn't even leave the country. I think. Um, oh. His private jet was already in the air, and it was headed somewhere in, in Africa, you know, one of the countries in Africa. Yeah, I, I broke down, like, the, the Fonnie Willis. Do you pay attention to her? No. That's the Georgia prosecutor who's prosecuting Trump in Georgia for the next year. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, and then she got caught with the dude or whatever. You know, she yeah, sat yeah. there. She tried to play the race card, which I was like, what a hypocrite are you? She's sitting there trying to play the race card, but right now she's got about seven RICO cases on young black rappers that are, that right. are there trying to use now look I don't know if these guys are guilty or innocent but she's trying to use their rap lyrics to send them away for life but now when right. somebody looks into her dirt you know like I even said a comment on her she's like you know they went into her text message and all after I haven't had a private conversation in 20 fucking years join the crowd right. you know what I mean it's just the truth right it's, it sucks but I mean you can't do dirt it ain't cause you're black you know what I'm saying she's like I won't do this to a black you're putting black men away every day. It's all bullshit. Like I used to tell guys in prison when uh, the shit was going on with Joe Biden and Trump. I, I, I'm a Trump guy. I like Trump. You know what I mean? Right. And like, I'll say like this, like I like Trump because I like Trump. You know what I mean? I just like his character. I like who he is. And I do like a, a lot of his policies because I'm not some guy like, you know, when people are like, I wish there was no cops. You can't have that. That's anarchy. You know, yeah. you can't have that. You know, you do need law and order. You do need things. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, when these guys say this stuff, like I even put on there, like how they're saying these street codes and all that kind of stuff. Listen, um, first off, these guys don't, these same guys don't believe in the street code. I got into an argument with this guy and he said, oh, well, I wouldn't do that. He's like, what would I tell him? I said, look, if I seen somebody kidnapping a child 
okay? Am I going to call the police? You're right I am. You're right yeah. I am. Call me whatever you want. I'll chase them down myself too, but there's a better chance of the police catching them. Listen, yeah. at the end of the day, I would rather you call me a million rats than have to look you in the face as a father and say, damn, Eric, you could have prevented that from happening to my child. You know, there's certain things that like um, terrorist shit. Like if I knew somebody's going to blow up a shopping mall, yeah, I'd turn them the f <laughs> You know what I mean? Yes. You know what I mean? But this, yeah, one, just, uh, this one dude's arguing with me, Matt, right? So he's saying all this and that. So I'm like, yeah. I said, but you're the same saying all that. I said, but if you walked outside and that car you're paying $1,000 a month car payment for was missing, who are you calling? Right. Yeah, yeah, if someone took all the money out of your bank account, wouldn't you want someone to cooperate and try and get your money back? Yeah. Or your mother's retirement fund? Yes. No, my mom mom can just sleep on my couch? Come on, man, stop. They it. don't know how to, listen. But then they, they, they're, they're lying. They're bullshit. See, they don't know how to, like, see, you know, like, like I said, like, like me, there's certain things like, dude, you, you could shoot me. You could shoot me. I won't tell him. I promise you. I won't, I won't tell him. No, that, that's, that's just, just who I am. And I'm retired. I'm not in the streets or anything, but that's just who I am, you know? But like, at the end of the day, if I shoot somebody or something and some lady sees it and calls the police and comes to be a witness, she's supposed to do that. Right. She's supposed to do that. You know what I mean? But there's certain things like, and these same people who are saying, oh, I wouldn't, they all did it. They all told on their friends. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all facts. You know, there's no honor amongst thieves. You know what I mean? There is none. Well, hey, if you guys like the video, do me a favor. Um, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified of videos just like this. Also, do me a favor and go to Eric's YouTube channel. I'm going to leave the link in the description box. So please subscribe to his channel. I really do appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. See ya.